broadcasting from their world headquarters in Texas. It's the Arcade Repair Tips Live Show, the show that discusses arcade repair, restoration, news, and more. Now, here are your hosts, Tim and Jonathan. Hello, everybody, and welcome to episode 22 of the Arcade Repair Tips Live Show for December 2018. My name is Jonathan Leung. I'm the producer, director, and editor of the Arcade Repair Tips video series. And joining me today, as always, is Mr. Arcade Repair Tips himself, Tim Peterson. Tim, how you doing? I'm a little tired. Or should I call you (laughs) Mr. Gaddy's Pizza? (laughs) Well, Uh, no, I wouldn't call me that yet. I I think somebody else deserves that title. How about... uh, all the employees call me Mr. Tim, so I think, I, <laughs> I think I've earned the old man status. Oh, there you go. Well, well, guys, we're so excited that you're here tonight. We are having a little bit of trouble with the stream, and you may notice that we're not at Mr. Gaddy's. We were hoping to broadcast live from there, but they've had a couple of internet issues, right, Tim? Yeah. They're still trying to resolve, so <clears throat> it happens. Uh, we understand, especially when opening a new store. So, But we are glad that you could join us tonight, and remember that you can interact with the show uh, via the live chat, so you guys make sure that you uh, leave your messages there, comments, questions, of course, and we'll get to those as the show progresses but first tim how's it going and how are things at mr gaddy's pizza they are we're going we officially opened on monday and today's thursday okay so this is our fur our fourth uh, day open and uh you know get a lot of little kinks worked out and stuff like that i like to tell everybody uh we have a lot of positive feedback so far uh, not 100%, but, you know, you, it's hard to please everybody. But most, I would say 98 99% of the people are really having a good time and enjoying the food and the games. Um, in fact, uh, you know, I sent you a comment. Somebody said that it was the best arcade they'd ever seen in East Texas. So that's what you want to hear. Absolutely. Now, Tim, we'll get into more about basically the last month for you because right. we went <laughs> back uh, in the november episode i think we had just gotten around to you being hired right and so basically in the last month you opened a restaurant yes <laughs> <laughs> so, so but instead so instead of doing the arcade debate segment tonight we're actually going to do an arcade discussion with tim where he's going to discuss some of the things that went into how to open a mr gaddy's pizza in one month's time yeah and you know john we've got a lot of questions about that and some of you out there have probably thought to myself i'd like to own my own arcade and uh, maybe I'll have some tips or tell you some of the things to look out for and some of the, um, you know, I don't think we did everything great, but I, there are some things we did correct and some stuff we would improve on when we open the next Mr. Gaddy's. Uh, you notice how I said that. When the next, we, when when we, we open, open the next, the Mr. next Gaddy's. Mr. Gaddy's, we'll look, we've learned from some mistakes. But if you've thought about uh, opening an arcade or your own business, you might want to stick around and listen to some of those. And we'll get to that as soon as we answer y'all's questions. Now, Tim, I haven't talked to you much because you've been so busy with the opening. Yeah. I know you've been busy. <laughs> so I'm looking forward to hearing what you have to say about the whole process as well. But, Tim, I have seen the Mr. Gaddy's, and it looks pretty awesome. In fact, you did a video, and you posted it on your Facebook page, but I went ahead and ripped it we're going to re-show it here so people can see what it looks like and get an idea right i knew everybody here would be interested in what the games look like you know it's it's not just a pizza place although that's kind of what they're known for uh it is we do have a large game room so if you were interested in the games that we actually got we talked about some of them but seeing them in person is a lot better so we'll show that video soon yeah and i'll walk you guys through it and well i think we'll show it when we're talking about the mr gays too we'll hold on a little bit longer i was thinking about showing it now but maybe we'll hold off a little bit love teasers right guys? okay <laughs> so tim before we move on i'm going to look over here at the chat room and see who we have we have silly sausage from california hey. in the house tonight we've got uh, greg and it looks like uh, he's I uh, look forward to seeing what you found out about my problem. We're going to be addressing your problem here in just a minute, Greg. Uh, we have YouTube Punk saying hello. Hey, YouTube. <laughs> uh, then we got uh, Gertie Music from Kentucky. First time here. Welcome. Kentucky. A lot of Gaddy's Pizzas in Kentucky. I bet he's got one near him. I did not realize this. The reason is, and we'll tell it now, what one time the uh, company was bought out and the headquarters was moved to Kentucky. So there's a lot in Kentucky and Indiana. If you're in that area... And you're familiar with, probably more familiar than Texans are with Mr. Gaddy's Pizza now or any, and there's not a lot in between. So it's kind of a, I found a lot of people, some of the people training are from Kentucky. There we go. So, okay guys, well we want to thank thank you guys all for being here. Here's Tim. Tim uh, in the chat room also says hi. Hello. Hi. You you guys shout out, tell where you're from. There you go. Now Tim, I do want to mention that instead of a tech tip, we're kind of doing a different show tonight. Yeah, Instead of a tech tip, I'm going to give Tim his Christmas present. I'm on the ball. It's the Christmas 
Christmas this is the hour, Christmas right? episode, technically, because uh, we won't do another episode until after New We Year. won't see you till next year. That's right, exactly. We won't see him till next year if you guys are watching the live show tonight. So we will be giving you your Christmas present. You can open it up and uh, show everybody what you got. Okay. Yeah. But now, enough with the pleasantries and everything. Oh, hang on. We got a couple more people here. Ice Man says hello. Hello. Um, we got Jeremy from Pineville, Louisiana. We got a new game called Ice Man. Oh. And we're going to show that in the video. Okay, there you go. Uh, Jeremy from Pineville, Louisiana. Okay, that's kind of middle Louisiana. And a geek, well, let's see, geek life from uh, Florida. Okay, welcome. And then, of course, YouTube Punk from South Texas. Yes. So we have the whole gang here. We're so glad you guys could join us tonight. Now, like I mentioned, we're having some problems with streaming issues. I don't know. Uh, Tim, my internet actually went out for like more than seven hours, like uh, about a day and a half ago. Yeah. And I'm still trying, I think they're still trying to get things up to full speed. So I'm sorry if there's some buffering tonight. We, ha we are recording this. So if the buffering is really bad on the live episode, we will upload it to you know, upload the recorded version so you guys can see the whole thing. So hopefully it's going to hold up, Tim, right. but we'll see. And Mr. Gaddy's is not far from your house, and we use the same provider because I That's called right. you yesterday and told you something's going on with you. You let me know, oh, it's the whole whole company here. That's so. right, yeah. So we've had a little bit of issues. Hopefully the internet will hold on for the live show tonight. Uh, Tim, we got uh, two more here. Greg says he's from Wisconsin, and Tim says he's from Burleson, Texas. Awesome. So, and then, oh, Detroit, RGB TV. Nice. And then we have James Epcot Correa in here. He says hi as well. Hello. Welcome, everybody. So let's continue on, Tim. Now, before we have any questions, the first thing we got here was from Edward. He left this comment, I think just yesterday, Tim, uh, and it says, wish I could watch today, and I think he means our live show today, right. but I will be in the hospital for a few more days for heart surgery. Wish me luck. So, Tim, I just wanted to mention that and say that uh, we are sending our thoughts, prayers, and lots of encouragement towards Edward in his heart surgery. So, yes. sorry you couldn't be here. Uh, hopefully, you can make the next one and you'll be alive and kicking. Right. And uh, be sure, and when you watch it, tell us how the heart surgery went. We hope that everything was okay. Now, Tim, this kind of segues into some other things that you wanted to talk about yes. uh, that we were kind of talking about here before the show started. So, um, obviously, a lot of people may be familiar with uh, Joel West, Tim. Yes. And he, is, um, he had the high score on Berserk. Yes. which is an arcade game. We had met Joel on several occasions, a very nice guy, but we recently heard a lot of talk that he has passed, and so we both wanted to express our condolences to his family at this difficult time. Joel was a very nice guy, Tim. Yes. Uh, every time we had guy. interactions with him, he was very nice, and so we just want to uh, you just want to remember him for those kind of nice things that he did. Yes, so. and uh, you know, some people have asked us, we really don't know any details, we don't know what happened. Um, if you do and you want to comment, that's fine. You know, we don't know how he died or anything, but we do want to sincerely wish his family our, our thoughts and our prayers. And uh, just the gaming community took a loss. I mean, it was uh, um, Joel was everybody knew Joel. It's kind of like he was, in, you know, he, and he was kind of outspoken. I'll say that much yeah. about him. Uh, but but you liked him to to you know whether you agreed with him or not. Everybody seemed to really like him, especially if you got to know him. He was real down to earth. When we met him, he didn't, you know, he talked to us, uh, interviewed with us. He was a great guy, and uh, he's deeply missed. And uh, so, you know, guys, it, it's the sad part is, Jonathan, it seems like the older we get, a lot of these heroes that we remember growing up with that invented games, we find some of them passing. Now I know what it was like for my dad to see people, uh, rock stars from the 50s or people that he grew up with that were starting to go away, you know, that's a sad part of life. But, you know, uh, definitely left his mark with us. And uh, I hope nobody beats that high score for a long, long, <laughs> long, long time. He was uh, always trying to get a better one, too, Tim. He was always going at it, always trying to get better. So. He was definitely an awesome player. Mm -hmm. And uh, we remember him uh, tonight and want to uh, just say a shout out to him and uh, prayers for his family. And Tim, I think we should also mention, of course, uh, George H.W. Bush has been a big thing in the news that his passing recently. And Tim, we're here in Texas, yes. so we are very familiar with H.W. So um, we just want to obviously send uh, prayers and thoughts out to the family and everything like that as well. We will talk more about that, I think, in the after show. Okay. Because that seems like a better, more appropriate place to put that. Sounds great. Uh, but um, we'll continue on, Tim. Let us move on to the questions that we have. And the first First one we have here, Tim, is from David. So let's move to David's question real quick. David says, hi there. I have a four-player Captain America and, a, and the Avengers cabinet that I converted to a 19-in-1 multi-cave. The original PCB is still mounted on the inside of the cabinet, and I was thinking about reconverting it back to the original game, but the JAMA wiring harness appears to only have wiring for two players. It's labeled coin one, player one right, player one left, etc. on one side, and on the other side it's labeled coin two, player two right, etc. I would think that there needs 
needs to be the same for players three and four. Do I need a second PCB or a different PCB to have four players or am I missing something? Thanks for your help, David from Sarasota, Florida. So David, uh, did he say he was in here earlier? I can't remember. I think so. Okay, David, if you're in here or if you're not, if you're watching this after the fact, I'm gonna throw this question to Tim. So. Tim, David's got a Captain America in the Avengers cabinet. He's got a 19 and one in it, but he wants to take it back to Captain America, which was a four player game. The problem is that the harness only has spots for two players. Right. So how does he wire up players three and four in order to allow them to work properly? Well, in most cases, there's, he's going to need an additional, like the, what we call the kick harness. Right. And that will uh, wire into his current har harness and uh, we're gonna we'll show a go ahead and show the screen if you want, John. Sure. So pretty straightforward. It's not your PCB. You need enough different wiring harness. Right. So what we got here is like Tim mentioned a kick harness, which is an additional harness on top of your Jamma harness. Right. So the Jamma harness only accommodates players one and two, Tim, as we know. But for four player games, a lot of times we have to have additional harnesses in order to get the players three and four in there. So um, that's what I put here, Tim. Basically, we call it the kick harness. In order to wire up these additional players, you will need this. And this plugs into a different connector on the board. That's important to note okay. for a lot of different people. So, Tim, our friend, at, our friend Joe at High Score Saves has them in stock for around twenty bucks. And you can select the Captain America and the Avengers harness when ordering. The only thing about Joe, Tim, is that Joe is is I think moving his shop and will not be able to ship anything till mid January. Okay. So if you do order it now, you may not get it until mid January because of that. But Joe is a very reputable person, Tim. Of course, he sent us things for review and other things in the oh, past. Yeah. We love Joe. Uh, highly recommend High Score saves.com for multi-cade boards and harnesses like this right yeah and if you look at the picture go uh going back re-watching this again you could make your own yes it's absolutely. not it's not super complicated but it's yeah. a lot easier to give joe 20 bucks too <laughs> that's right <laughs> so get the harness it's not guys. that far by the time you watch this it won't be you'll get tied up with christmas so uh we do highly recommend that you get that and it's cool that he makes the one you can actually select captain america and the avengers that's right knowing you're getting the right one and I'm pretty sure it comes with some instructions or something, too. So that will help. But, of course, if you get that and you need some additional help, we probably won't talk much more about it now. But if you need more help later, once you get it, let us know. Sounds good. So, David, hopefully answers your question. And good luck converting your Captain America and the Avengers 19 and 1 back to the original PCB that came with it. Okay, Tim, we got a couple of, uh, you know, little comments and things here in the live chat. Um, let's see what we got here. Somebody says, uh, Rip uh, G.I. Joel, a real American gamer. There you go. I like so uh, I got to chat with him at length about chasing ghosts. He's very polite and patient. And that's from YouTube Punk. Yes, and every interaction we ever had with Joel was great. And uh, we can't say enough nice things about him for sure. Mm -hmm. So, uh, let's see what else we got here. He said he didn't ha he didn't see a dime from the movie, Chasing Ghosts. So, <laughs> <laughs> well, there you go. Um, let's see. Um, okay, t uh, Ty let's see here. Tiger360 says, um, Hi, right down from I-30. Cannot wait to visit your new arcade and grab a slice of pizza. Are you going to be in the Sulphur Springs? Are you going to be in Sulphur Springs, Texas? Oh, um, you know, that is a location that we have thought about. I don't know. If we'll get that far north because of um, Sulphur Springs, not too big a town. But you know what? There's not a lot to do there. There's a lot of people right. that need to play games. <laughs> I wouldn't rule it out. There you go. Now, we should mention that I know you got, a well, lot you guys have seen uh, the videos with Michael. And Michael is actually from Sulphur Springs. That's where That's we go correct. to record. Um, he's since moved. He's no longer in Sulphur Springs. But Michael used to live there. So we used to make trips just to, to Sulphur Springs just to see Michael uh, back in the day. So when we used to do the vis videos. But so. I'll definitely make it worth your trip to Tyler if you want to come. There you go. So... Uh, let's see what else. Uh, JR Vintage Toys and More. What's up from Sandusky, Ohio? I've been able to enjoy the last two live shows. Happy holidays, guys. Happy holidays. Happy Merry holidays. Christmas. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Happy Hanukkah. Kwanzaa. Yeah. Whatever you celebrate. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see here. Gertie Music. I'm building my own home theater and just got into Raspberry Pi. I want to build a Pi fighting stick to connect to my projector via wireless, uh, wirelessly via, via HDMI. Any tips? I mean, it, you know, the nice thing, Tim, is that's pretty straightforward. Um, there's not a whole lot. I mean, it, basically, with the Raspberry Pi, and you know, Tim, I have a... Um, Oh, what is the thing? Arcade, um, one of those arcade fighting sticks already. Putting a Raspberry Pi in, it's pretty trivial. You can just hook it up. Uh, you may need a keyboard encoder, depending on how many inputs you have. But um, uh, thankfully, Tim, the entire thing's pretty straightforward as far as hooking it up and everything. So, I mean, as far as tips go, I don't know if there's anything. You can get the pre-built sticks if you want to, or if you want to do it yourself, that's fine. It's kind of up to you. But, um, uh, you know, it's a fun project, I would say, and definitely one that's worth your time. There's nothing like playing a lot of these games, Tim, on a big, like, 42, 50, 55, 65-inch oh, yeah. television. So. You remember when we went to the arcade and the guy had all those on the wall? I was like, what a simple idea, but it was fun. Right. You know, it was kind of, kind of that idea 
of uh, all the big screens, and he just had the console down there or the stand up and the big screens on the wall. Absolutely. Now I did see one up here earlier. James Epcot Correa says, "If I if I get a dollar from 300 people, I'm going to blow up an arcade one up." cabinet on the live stream so there you go so it, it, apparently on his channel if you want to see one blown okay. up you can um the nice thing is that walmart has the asteroids one for 200 so that's even less you'll and make a hundred dollars that's right you can make a hundred dollars can buy your dynamite with or it. you can see yeah um i think in some areas we're looking at 150 for arcade one up 75 a hundred dollars in some areas and tim the funny thing is that walmart's uh, pricing is variable based on who, whatever the store manager wants to do. Right. So if a store manager has a lot of these things sitting on the shelf, Tim, and he wants to move them, move he them. can slash the price and get them off the floor. So, right. I so. mean, so that's something to think about. That's why all the Walmarts have different pricing because it just depends on their demand versus the stock that they have. And they take up a lot of room. So managers are encouraged to move these things out as fast as possible. So you may see them cheaper. I don't know. But anyway, let's see. Um, oh, ETA Prime videos will help. Uh, will help. Yes, ETA Prime has some great videos on Raspberry Pi for sure if you guys want to check that out. Um, just wait till Christmas and save serious money. Exactly. If you wait until after Christmas, they'll be lower than $300. I believe right? that. Exactly. Yeah. So, I mean, we have ours over here. Tim actually fired it up to play a game of Asteroids while, while Asteroids I was prepping Deluxe. stuff. Yeah, mm -hmm. so you were playing Asteroids Deluxe is yep. what you had up. There you go. So, uh, they're fun to play, Tim. They're still fun to play. It's fun. So, there you go. Okay, Tim, I think we're caught up on the live chat. Okay. And it looks like our stream stats has gone to good, so we're in better shape now. Hopefully, you guys are experiencing the show a little bit better than just a second ago. And hopefully, it'll stay up. Everybody cross your fingers, mm -hmm. toes, whatever we have to cross mm -hmm. in order to get this thing going. So let us move on to Troy's question, though, Tim. And here we go. So we have a Pac-Man 4-in-1 cocktail table, and our image shakes, our screen image shakes to the right every consistently. It's, a, I guess, every five seconds consistently is what he means there. Everything else works perfectly. We watched your YouTube videos and wonder what we should do to fix our problem. Any advice would be appreciated. Sincerely, Troy. So, Tim, Troy's got a 4-in-1 cocktail table, which probably has some sort of 4-in-1 kit on the Pac-Man board. We've seen a couple of these. They're pretty popular. And so he's saying that his image consistently shakes to the right, like just shakes to the right. So right. with that in mind, what do you think is going on with Troy's monitor here that would cause it to shake to the right? Well, he's he said he's watched our videos, but there's a lot of them. Yeah, so I want to specifically direct him to the one that talks about a, how, how to adjust an arcade monitor. Sure. Because it could simply be just that it's out of adjustment, like maybe the horizontal or the vertical hole. Because sometimes you just have to tweak that just a little bit to get that picture to stabilize. Now, if that's not the issue, then he needs to check his connections going to the main board and also to the monitor. He may want to reflow the solder on the back of those connections, but hopefully just tweaking that monitor a little bit will help. The way he described it, the way he said it like basically shakes to the right makes me think more hold issue. Yes. But because, you know, like a lot of times when we're having like grounding issues or connection issues, you'll get kind of like the shimmy. Yes. Kind of type shape. On both not sides. a not a, exactly not a right kind of shape. Exactly. Like he's talking Sounds about. like it's trying to scroll. Exactly. So it's, it's like scrolling. almost to that point. Right, because the hold is just a tiny bit off, just mm -hmm. enough to make it annoying. And so I think in this particular case, Tim, you're exactly right. I think it's more of a hold issue, but we'll go ahead and throw this up here. Um, from, your, from your description, it sounds like it, you might be experiencing some sort of hold issue. We recommend adjusting your horizontal and vertical hold adjustments on your monitor chassis to see if it helps the issue. Might also try the sync adjustments, but please uh, see our post on adjusting an arcade monitor for more information. If the image continues to shake after adjusting the monitor, like Tim mentioned, remove the chassis and try touching up any solder joints that look cold, broken, or damaged. Touch up solder on the input pins as well. And Tim, we've seen that where the screen will kind of, like we talked about, give a little shimmy yeah. or something like that. And a lot of times that's due to a grounding issue or some cold solder joints on the back of it. That's definitely pins. something you want to tr to check all your grounds and make sure anyway. Right. And even that your ground plug to the wall is good too. But those are some great places to start. But check that, uh, check that hold out just a little bit. And sometimes even reflowing the solder on the back of that potentiometer will help. Absolutely. Or cleaning it. Yeah, absolutely. So, Troy, hopefully it answers your question. Try the hold adjustments first. And like Tim mentioned, we may need to take the ch chassis out. Touch up some solder joints as well in order to get that hold dialed in. Tim, I know we've had those monitors in the past where the hold just won't dial in right. It right. seems like it's just barely off. And a lot of times you may have to either replace a potentiometer or touch up some solder joints in order to get it working properly. So, Troy, hopefully I answered your question. And good luck getting that little bit of shake out of your Pac-Man 4-in-1 cocktail cap. Before we go farther, Johnson, I should mention to everybody that I am kind of on call because we've only been open four days. So <laughs> if my phone rings, I actually have to take it because it is a live show. I did tell them to call me, though, if they need it or something happened or if it was an emergency. So they might. 
But so I do apologize. Normally we silence our phones or we tell right. our wives and family that we're going to be here and nobody bothers us. But it could happen tonight, so you guys, I know, will be understanding if it happens. I'm sure they will, Tim. And, you know, um, it's just, you know, that's part of what makes the live show the live show, right? Right. <laughs> so, also, what part call. of making a general manager versus just the tech. Yeah, they call exactly. you first, right? Right, exactly. So that makes sense. So, Tim, we will totally understand. I will totally understand. I'll know about them. Okay. I will totally understand if <laughs> well, you have to you. take a call during the show. Uh, Tim, we should mention that um, te- uh, TexJYT just donated $20 to us. Wow. Thank you so much. We love it when people donate. Tim, Thank he says, you. happy holiday. Holidays, guys, keep up the good work. We will try our best. And thank you so much for that kind and generous donation. Yes, love happy holidays to you. That's right. Absolutely. So uh, let's see here. Uh, JR's Vintage Toys and More. Last live show, I asked you guys about USB microscope that I picked up. I haven't used it for arcade boards yet. But holy cow, I looked at some of the, co- uh, let's see, some of the, or some coins. And this thing's going to help a lot even even has an LED light. Awesome. So uh, last time he, um, uh, JR's Vintage Toys and More mentioned that he was going to pick up a microscope to do some board repairs with. I right. Tim. Because that way you can actually see the cold. We talk about cold solder joints. Those are usually little cracks. Exactly. And you can see those through under a microscope like that. And it sounds like that's really going to work out for JR in this particular case. So thanks for the update. We always love updates, Tim. Awesome. Uh, then we had, let's see, uh, they just ended it implement Steam Link support in RetroPie. Yeah, so RetroPie, Tim, is an imaging gift for the Raspberry Pi that allows you to play retro games. Okay. And so now you can have Steam Link in that, which really does help as well. So, awesome. uh, especially with the wireless broadcasting. So, that kind of stuff. Um, and it looks like Louie actually um, actually linked to a video. Probably one of the ones by ETA Prime or something okay. else. So, Thank you, Louie. There you go. Uh, let's see. How's the new job going? Iceman, we're going to give an update here in just a bit. And show a video. That's right, and show a video. So, YouTube Punk, 20 bucks. Wow. Thank you. Thank, thank you, thank you. So you. Happy holidays to everyone at our repair tips thank you for all the great shows thank you so much for your donation and for being here all the time youtube punk's always here with us and we always like it when we have repeat um repeat viewers tim yes. right people who come into every live show we love you guys so uh let's see what else we have here headless horseman hi guys thanks for all you guys do for us Awesome. Well, you're welcome. We try our best. Hopefully, you find something quest- useful. He has a question tonight, right? He does. There's one in there. Stay so, tuned. Yeah, we'll get that here in a bit. And uh, Louie is also thanking everybody for us, Tim. So okay. thank you, Louie, for thanking everybody. Yeah. <laughs> so, thank you, Louie, for being so thankful. That's right. Exactly. And for those of you guys who don't know Louie, Louie posts a lot of stuff on our Facebook page and is also a moderator in the live chat tonight. So if you say anything offensive, Louie, make sure it gets out of there. Right. So, <laughs> but anyway, let us continue real quick with our you questions. you got to get pretty rough to get offensive. Uh, I'm telling you. We're, you we're, not, we're not like the... Uh, uh, maybe it's cold outside. People that no, get offended, right? That's right. No, not at right. all. No, it, take, it, it, it takes a little bit more to get it that's offended. That's right. That's right. So here we go. But most of our guys are pretty nice. Anyway. Yeah, you guys are all nice. We know. There's, we never have that problem. Right. It, it's the spammer, spammers that just jump into the live chat real quick, say something, jump out. Those are the people <laughs> that are the problem. You guys aren't the problem. Okay, right. here we go. Here, Tim from Byron. Next question. Looking for a new outlet like this. Do you know where I can find one? And Tim, I think you have a long and storied history with this outlet. Yes. Um, <laughs> you know, that's a great question. Question because <laughs> that thing right there can and, and if you don't know uh, that is a, a switch it's a switch power supply kind of converter all in one in yes. a way and um, fuse that's the key word fuse right and a lot of people he's probably looking to replace it but he may not know that there's a fuse in there wow and probably his fuse is blown and you could, a lot of times you can replace a fuse if you'll pull the picture back up or we can sure. go into the slide yeah Jonathan. I'll go to the slide well because we do know where to get one yes we do. If guys, right under the red button, you'll... I'll pull his picture up, because his picture kind of shows it better, I think. Yeah, maybe if you point to it with the pointer I, right... I don't think they can see the pointer. Oh, they can't. Yeah. Right in the middle, right there where there's some writing, right above the socket, that is a little trap door, I guess you would call it. Trap you take, door. <laughs> it's a trap. Well, you wouldn't door. know... You almost wouldn't know it was there. It just looks like a plate. If you take a pocket knife or a flat, tiny flathead... That will pop open and pop out, and that's where the fuse is. A lot of I know that sounds rudimentary, and some people may uh, may already know that. But it, I, it took me a long time to figure that one out. And when I did, I, I said I would uh, help with that. A lot of newer style arcade games, a lot of newer skee ball lanes. Every game made by the company ICE will have those on there. Right, and, and they do things, go bad. Yeah, they're switched power sockets, basically. Yes, is what they are. And I'll put up the one where we have all the description stuff here. And like Tim mentioned, the fuse. I didn't put that on here, Tim, because we've actually seen these go bad before. Yeah, and sometimes I assume that the fuse. Like, you already checked the fuse? A lot. I know for a long time, I didn't even know they had a fuse. Oh, they got <laughs> But on the other side, you see those terminals. You They will get kind of blackened, and you can kind of tell. That's kind of like a, a relay there that will break or will get overloaded. Those do go bad. 
it's easier just you can just replace that part uh, or the light inside the little switch will go out but most of the time if you see those two screw holes it's just as easy to replace the whole thing and they're not too too bad i'm not sure what twisted quarter five uh, bucks five bucks wow I was going to say, I, I know they're under $20 from like mouth yeah. and stuff, so but read, five bucks is cheap. Yeah, I'll read the whole thing here. Yes, this is a switch power socket with a 5 amp fuse. This module is used in a lot of recently released coin-op games. Unfortunately, they have, they are prone to issues, Tim. We've yes. had them. We've had to replace a lot of them due to failure. With that said, they do make wiring up AC voltage easy. The good news is that they're pretty easy to come by. Several sellers on eBay that have these in stock. Twisted Quarter, one of our favorite arcade parts suppliers, sells them for around $5. And Tim, we linked it there. And I think that I man uh, 1540 here is actually byron here okay and hey, byron. he said he found one on amazon okay so there you go now you can actually also test these by putting your meter on the prongs on one side they should you should get a continuity beep when you flip the switch on right. it should allow that to go through and off so your meter should work or should not work or you can actually plug it in and re measure the voltage on, on the, the other, other side. side be careful with that of course because it is 120 but that may help you test these. But most of the time when they go bad, it's pretty obvious on the other side. It'll kind of bubble up or be burned or black. They usually go. They go good. There you go. You know, they're like, <laughs> I guess a go-go is that a, I don't know. They smoke and do a lot of stuff. So <laughs> When they go. They're gone. You can tell. Yeah, they're you gone. You can tell. <laughs> so there you go. So Byron is in here, Tim. I hope he got it fixed. And hopefully that's not, that answered his question and solved his problem. We love both those. So, um, but uh, give us an it's update, almost Byron, a good, let us know. If you've got a lot of newer style games, it's be a good part just to have around. Absolutely. So there you go. So Byron, hopefully answers your question. And yeah, give us an update. Let us know if it solved your problem as well. And Tim, we have some more live chat here. Let's see what we got here. Um, Tim says his six-year-old daughter, Aubrey, says hi. Hello, hi, Aubrey. Aubrey. And mm -hmm. the nice thing about our show, Tim, 100% family friendly. Yeah. Well, 99%. 99%. 99.9. Get them off after the after show, maybe. That's but. right. <laughs> yeah, that's right. No, don't we try, we try to be, best. and so it's good that you don't have to edit us, or you can have your kids running around. We we like that, that we can be that way. Absolutely. Or we try to be. That's right. Uh, YouTube Punk says, just wait for the arcade debates that'll really get heated. Tim might flip a table or something. <laughs> well, here's the deal. In the spirit of Christmas, no arcade <laughs> debate tonight. Only an arcade yeah. discussion. Right. Just so, discussion. That's right. Just discussion. No arcade debate. In the spirit of Christmas. All right. So with that in mind. Peace and so. good will. That's right, towards all men and all I that mean, kind of stuff. I mean, Obama sat next to Trump today. That's you know, right, so, good or <laughs> Michelle did. There you go. <laughs> you know, if they can get anything along, can happen. That's right. If they can get along, I they think we can get it, along. They faked it pretty good. There you go. Yeah. So, um, let's see what else we have here. Um, YouTube Punk says, I think, I think I've seen those plugs on AliExpress. AliExpress is another seller, guys. eBay, Amazon, AliExpress. Those are like my three go-tos for mm -hmm. pretty much anything. So, I mean, yeah, you're... Pretty much every kind of seller on any of these uh, sites, if they sell any kind of electrical or arcade parts, you'll probably be Sometimes I'm just knowing what something's called. Exactly. You know, I, I know what it is. I know Amazon has it, but narrowing it down is a little bit hard. But switch power socket. Yeah, switch power you. socket. That, that's usually how they refer to it. Uh, JR says, I ordered a 61 board from Holland Computers, and they sent me one of the power button sockets i was wondering what the heck it was and they sent me a 16 one and let me keep the socket so they must have accidentally sent you the socket i guess instead of the 16 one right board. all computers though i don't think sells multi boards anymore oh yeah you yeah. know i, I mean they yeah, may they were... but yeah but i know that they've they've recently got out of it i think mm -hmm. but uh, you can still get 16 ones from ebay amazon and aliexpress <laughs> so, <laughs> so right same places we talk about so right. anyway um yeah but those things are really handy we yes. see them on a lot of games very good so. And if you don't have one on your game, they would be easy to install. Absolutely. You just cut out the hole for the back. And, you know, here's one thing that I, I, I always like to do. If I had a game, I like to be able to turn it on and off. Yeah. I don't like to have to go and unplug it from the wall right. and all this. Uh, also, in case of emergency or something, you need to turn it off or it's smoking. I like to have a switch either on top of the game or something easy to get to. I can quickly turn it off. Exactly. So, and, th and here's the thing. If you have a game right now, Tim, that only has a plug coming out with no power switch, like you said, easy enough to just wire this thing in place. Yes. So, absolutely. It's very easy. Um, Louis says we should do CRT versus LCD. Okay. I think we've already done stuff like that, right? Maybe. I don't know. We might save it for January. Star Wars versus Star Trek? 
Oh man, that could get heat. that could get that could get a little heated there. Okay, you know, or we'll do we'll, WWE, style, WWE right? style, right? Exactly. So there we go. Okay, guys, let us continue on with the questions. The next one we have is from Greg, and Greg says, "Hello, I saw your YouTube videos and thought I'd reach out for some help here. I bought an Ultimate Tabletop Arcade a couple of weeks ago from Arcade Classic, and I'm having problems with the color. I tried using the degaussing wand that they gave me, but it didn't work. It didn't help. Excuse me. The game will turn greenish." then go back to normal color randomly when I'm playing. If I bump the table, sometimes the color will go back in and out to that greenish color and then back to normal. I would very much like to talk to you guys. My name is Greg. Thanks again. So Tim, we have Greg here. He's got an ultimate tabletop arcade and he's having problems with color where it's kind of going in, it'll turn greenish and then it'll turn back. And if he hits it, it kind of comes back for a right. second. It's that old, um, if I mm. whack it enough times, it'll eventually work. Right. Kind of thing, We've so. all had that arcade game. Yeah, I think. exactly. If you've been collecting any <laughs> time at all you know the one that you're sitting there playing and your friends are all there and then it starts wigging out until you got to whack it that's right exactly um but of course that is not in the arcade repair tips the spanking paddle is not part of the <laughs> not toolbox part of, oh there you go <laughs> no, we want to you know but they're usually easy fixes if you're able to do that and cause it to temporarily work again i got good news that means it's probably a pretty easy fix. Yes. There's really only a couple things that it is could be. It's a it's some kind of bad connection, either a loose wire or a cold solder joint. Seeming that it's new, you assume that the solder joint is sort of going to be okay, but not always the case. Right. But it could definitely be the wiring. So whatever color wire it is, I would really check into that. And sometimes just reconnecting everything will take care of that. Absolutely. And I'm going to go ahead and throw this up here. Now, I should mention that Greg actually wrote back. Okay. So I know what the answer was. Oh. Um, but... What we were saying, color issues like this are usually due to either loose wiring or bad solder connections or an issue with the color functions, uh, adjustments, tri drive transistors on your monitor chassis. We recommend starting off this repair by checking the wiring that runs from your main board uh, to your monitor chassis. Make sure it's not damaged in any way. We also recommend checking the solder on the input pins on your monitor chassis. The problem continues after checking these areas. Please see our post on adjusting an arcade monitor and checking a monitor tube for more information. Tim, Greg wrote back and said that Arcade Classic sent him a replacement neck board. Okay. And he replaced the neck board and, and it worked. worked. So and it was probably hard. a color drive transistor. Probably so. Or, or something connection or solder joint some sort of connection in board. the neck board thank so. you for letting us know greg as exactly uh as expected it's probably something like right that. and in our video on uh, checking a monitor tube tim we talk about that yes so i mean if you have not seen that video it's a great video so you can technically repair that other neck board unless you have to send it back to them uh, and probably get it working as well so there you go. So uh, that, I think that addresses Greg's question. He's up and running. He said he had his electrician come out to do it. He was I don't know if he's a little scared to work on the <laughs> okay. neck board. You know, it does, a lot of times neck boards have those nice little pieces of cardboard that say high voltage on it. Right, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, Do not touch. Exactly. Only trained to lick. Uh, technicians exactly. and all that stuff. So, you know, a lot of times you don't want to touch those if you see those kind of wording. I never on. would have learned if I, that would have. If that stopped you. Yeah, that would stop me. So. <laughs> so there you go. But Greg, we're glad we got, you know, you got your, uh, your, um, your ultimate tabletop all set up and working properly now so and thanks for the update always yeah. like updates avoid so. a lot of warranties there you go <laughs> so we got a couple in here um okay danny says i had an arcade cabinet that has a pandora's bot pandora's box and wanted to know if i could wire a pc monitor to the power supply to eliminate the cord yes you can uh so the you have a couple of options here tim on the pc you will have to strip the wire that currently goes to your arcade monitor the power wire mm -hmm. and get it down to the black white and green wires oh, yes. but once you have it there you should be able to wire that into pretty much anywhere you have ac power in the cabinet um a lot of people like to tap into where the switching power supply is tim uh -huh. like the ac um, on the switching power supply you can tap in there you can tap in where the so AC line the filter lights. Yeah, you can tap in where the marquee light is. You can tap in where the AC line filter is. You have a lot of options, but the first step is going to be to strip the power cord, strip the plug end off the power cord, and strip the individual wires so you can use those. Again, green, Tim, black and white. Of course, the black and white uh, are for AC hot, or AC line, AC neutral. So um, that way you can go in there, wire those up where they need to go, and it should power on with the cabinet. If you wire it past the power switch, like with the marquee light, for instance, then it actually come on with the cabinet. Right. So that's something to keep in mind. So, okay, let's see what else we have here. Um, JR Vintage, Vintage Toys and more. Tim, what was the size of the step-down bit 
uh, use for plexiglass control panels and install the buttons or the hole saw the size that you use. So what's the hole saw size you use for buttons? One and one eighth. One and one eighth. It's a one inch button and you give yourself that one eighth extra of an inch to just give you a little wiggle room. Of course, you know you got that round uh, bezel or whatever you want to call it on the top. Right. So it gives you, you, you need a little bit of wiggle room. One inch, it's really tight. Sometimes you got to pound it to get it in. You don't want to do that. One and one eighth. Man, if you're going to buy the, um, the uh, step down bit, the step down drill bit for this in order mm -hmm. to cut the plexi, you just need to make sure that whichever one you're using has that one, one and one eighth. Yeah, make sure that it's wide enough on the top to be one and one eighth. Exactly. So, I mean, a lot of times it'll be one and one eighth will be in the middle, but if you drill the buttonhole first before you put the plexiglass on, then it'll just fall right into that hole, exactly. which is very nice. So, uh, let's see here. Uh, uh, Headless Horseman says, Tim, I got a Killer Instinct cab with an RCA tube and an unknown chassis. Someone told me it may have been from a TV. Uh, it it has vertical collapse. I replaced the vertical IC, but it has made no difference. Any suggestions? So we have some we have some uh, vertical collapse issues. <laughs> yeah, and back in the day, I've seen that where somebody thought, well, I'll just put a TV tube in there because they see the word RCA and they think they can just go grab a TV tube. That could be what you have. Uh, what we like to do is go to Bob Roberts' site and look at what's my monitor page. Right. And he literally has is. pictures and pictures and pictures of a lot of chassis. You may also just go to our Facebook page or, or one of the other arcade sites and post a picture of it. I know there's some arcade monitor repair sites on Facebook that you could do that and somebody else may recognize it. But if it is a true TV tube, it's not going to work without some kind of conversion. So I would try to find out that route to see it, what kind you have and then you can go about on with the repairs and getting the right kit for it. I was going to mention on the vertical IC, a lot of times you need to make sure that the traces are, are proper too, that you didn't burn a trace up or anything like that when you soldered it in, or that the, there aren't other burnt traces further on down the line on your vertical IC, because we've seen that before where there was a burnt trace Many and it's times. not making a connection. They're so. kind of hard to repair without the right equipment. Some of them you really have to get hot, and that usually does cause that trace to lift. You can usually tell. I've damaged a lot of them and had to rerun a little trace wire. Um, you might check for continuity from one leg. I like to do it on the upside of my chassis around to the next place, bottom side. That way I know it's going all the way through that leg and all the way through that trace. Sure, absolutely. And so those are some things to think about. Now, there's a slight possibility it could be a bad cap because bad caps in the vertical section can also cause this. But that's rare, mm -hmm. not unheard of. So um, if there's a if there is an issue, a cap kit could solve it if it is an issue with voltage in the vertical section of the monitor. But if you let us know what chassis you have, we can help you better troubleshoot. That's yeah, what nothing else. To. Send us a picture too. Absolutely, and we can try to help you out. So, okay, Tim, uh, let's see here. Greetings from Australia. Well, hello. There you go, and that is from uh, well, Diamond night. Dave. Diamond Dave. So, He's been here before. Yes. Uh, need to know what chassis this is. Oh, and uh, Louis actually posted a link to the um, Real Bob Roberts, um, the monitor. What's my monitor? Know, what's my monitor? Page. Okay. So thank you, Louis. Will you guys be a TPF? I was on one of your shows a couple years ago when you um, when you were there and had Jersey Jack Guarneri on at the same time. Um, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if we're yeah. going to be a TPF. Um, I know, I, you know, I imagine that... I would love to at least come for Saturday night or something. Right. I know that Eric and Rusty will probably make the trip mm -hmm. because they usually bring a lot of games with them. So they'll probably be there. I don't know if we'll be there. That really depends on scheduling. Because right yeah, now, Tim's kinda, schedule's kind of up in the air. It, it kind of depends on when our spring break falls. Because, as you know, the spring break is the busiest week of the year. And exactly. being a new business, we hope it's busy. Yes, exactly. We hope it's our busiest record week. So... I uh, don't know that I'll be off that weekend. So there you go. So maybe. We'll keep mm -hmm. you posted. Check in on the next live show. Maybe we'll have a better answer. How about that? Hope so. <laughs> there you go. So um, we also have, is there um, is there anywhere to have sound chips fixed on a lethal enforcers? So um, there are places that sell replacement chips now. Yes. Uh, for the Konami boards. I cannot think of any of them off the top of my head, unfortunately. But there are places where you can get the replacement sound chips from now for lethal enforcers, X-Men, and some of the other Konami games. If anybody in the chat room knows and wants to post, we'll mention it. I should I know it. Yeah, either. I should know it off the top of my Does head. Does Hobby Roms not carry the sound chips No, like they're that? proprietary. Um, okay. they, it's a proprietary chip that you have to get. 
And there is a way to repair it, but it's a big hassle. Replacing it is better, and there is places. There are they places have that the rights sell them. To do yeah, it? that's well. Okay. I don't know if they have the rights, but they can. They, they do sell it. replacement chips. So um, that was not the case just a couple years ago. Even I think right. this is a recent development. So you may see if you can find one of these chip sellers that'll help you out with that. Um, like I said, man, I. I I should know there is a, there's at least one I should know off the top of my head and I can't think of at the moment. Ian Kellogg maybe, but I'm not for sure. Well, I can't. Remember. Maybe if you think of it or if anybody knows and posts, we'll mention it uh, later in the show. Absolutely, there you go. So let us continue on here, Tim. We got several questions on Arcade One Up cabinets. Imagine that. All right. So let's go ahead and go here and say uh, we'll take these three kind of all together, or maybe I'll throw it to you. Did you play the Crystal Castles game? If you did, did you feel the trackball was good with it? I have the game, and sometimes I feel like I really got to focus on moving the bear around. Bentley Bear, Tim. For yes. those who are, in, uh-huh. who are. So before we go on to the next question here, Tim, what do you think of the trackball in Crystal Castles? I mean, are you okay with it? Yes. Me and too. Uh, I, will, uh, I will say that when we hooked up your 12 and 1, uh, the first one of the first games you played was Crystal Castles, yep. and you definitely have played it more than me. So I'll throw that one back to you. You tell us what your honest opinion of is. So I don't like the fact that the trackball has two buttons on the side of it that are kind of close. Yeah, cause because I'm used to on. like yeah, I'm used to like really rolling that ball. But um, as far as I can tell, Tim, it plays well. Now, Tim, he mentioned that he really has to focus on moving the bear sometimes. It's kind of how the it original was. game was. Kinda yeah, like, that. like if you haven't played the original ca- uh, Crystal Castles arcade game, pretty much the same thing. Mm-hmm. So I mean, you kind of had to focus on moving that bear around. So um, that's not a new thing. Um, it's just you really have to make sure you get those directions exact on Crystal Castles when you're playing it. That's just the gameplay. I always part of it. thought it was a hard game. It is a hard me. game, but I love it. I like. Right. Just, I just love to play it. And it's very kid friendly. You know, <laughs> that's I mean, your daughter likes. Yeah, it too, that's say Olivia really likes it. So um, you know, it's one of those games that's really kid friendly. To me, it's fun to play. Yeah. So uh, it is what it is. So um, yes, um, we did play Crystal Castles. We did feel like trackball was good. And yes, you will maybe have to really move that trackball to get him moving. But that's kind of how the arcade game was too. Tim, do these really sound cheap? Are they two-player? And Tim, I think he's referring to the actual sound. Like okay. how's the sound from them? It's okay. I mean, it's not spot on. It's not right. 100% on. It is emulation uh, But neither still. is MAME. So right, exactly. that's what I would say. It's as good as any MAME cabinet that we've owned, right. besides one that we might have been boost. We had an amp and one and some bass and right, stuff. Right, exactly. I mean, of course, it doesn't sound like that. But for the original game, I'm not going to stretch that. Mm-hmm. I mean, the original sound, but it's it's okay. Yeah, and we should mention that all of them are mono sound, Tim. They're not stereo. Right, they're not stereo. So, uh, you know, that's part of it. There's only one speaker on there. Um, you know, some people have found mods and hacks to hack the stereo for, like, Street Fighter and games that were stereo sound. Mm-hmm. Um, but I don't know how far those have gotten, if they've really had any success with that. Um, but there is only one speaker on every I would yeah. definitely try that if you uh, if that was, if was sound is an issue yeah. to you. And they to are too. Not- yeah, and they classic are... Classic games, it doesn't matter. I was going to say, they are two-player. Yeah. Um, now, most classic games are not simultaneous two-player they are take turns two-player right you know and so uh whereas a lot of um there are some though uh tim the street rampage. fighter 2 the rampage cabinet both those are two and three player respectively for those games and so yes they are two-player and you can get two players next to them we we kind of tested that out to make sure and you can play two right two people side by side it's a little tight but i mean you can still play pretty effectively like that right so and then tim the next one i thought was interesting are these <laughs> going to be question. the crosley of arcade machines now tim are you familiar with the brand crosley Yes. They sell like um, really miniature jukeboxes and they sell record players and they sell all sorts of stuff. But I think in relation to it, I think he's thinking about the jukeboxes specifically, Tim. So what do you think about the jukeboxes? You think that the RK 1-Ups are kind of like the Crosley jukeboxes a little bit? Maybe so. It's just not our market, like we've said. Um, It does bring the games I've heard a lot of people talking about. Uh, even people at Gaddy's, are you going to have a classic game? Mm -hmm. Uh, And maybe that helps to promote uh, classic gaming, right? Uh, whether we're solid buyers or sold on it, or you know, we've debated this thing yeah, over exactly. and over. <laughs> and I know some of you uh, obviously want to blow them up, and some of you think they're okay. Whatever it is, it, it's a discussion, and it's uh, bringing back to remember. I've heard some people say. I forgot about that game. Oh, yeah, I remember that game. Right. And, and uh, YouTube Punk so, that says Crosley goes way back. That's true, but what most people know Crosley for nowadays, Tim, is, like I said, cheap jukeboxes from right. home. So, I mean, if you do a search for Crosley jukeboxes on uh, on Amazon, you're going to get these guys that are about this big. It's just, a, it is what it is, and uh, 
I, I know that there's going to be some kids open them up for Christmas be really excited. Absolutely. So, so I'll go ahead and put this slide up because it kind of summarizes everything we talked about. We own the 12 and one Tim. We have not noticed any problems with the trackball controls when playing Crystal Castles. It's always had a bit of wonkiness to it, Tim, and then the trackball controls even on the original arcade cabinet. And then the audio on most games is not bad, but not as good as the original versions. All arcade one-up cabinets only have one speaker. Uh, yes, you can play two-player on two-player games in the cabinet. The Crosley brand is a pretty good comparison of arcade one-up cabinets. And we should say, Tim, the Crosley brand now is a good comparison of what arcade one-up cabinets are supposed to be. Crosley now sells small jukeboxes, and arcade one-up sells small arcade cabinets. Right. It kind of goes along, hand-in-hand. Hand. So yeah, I think, I I think, think that probably is an accurate description. Absolutely. So, um, But, but you know, I don't know that they'll ever change their format. I think they like what they, they probably sold a lot of oh, them. Oh, yeah. So I think so. so. So and you know Crosley keeps putting out jukeboxes every year, Tim. And I'm uh, just saying. yeah, and I wonder kind of what what games. In fact, I know of one <laughs> that I've been sworn to secrecy that hasn't been announced yet. Right. So obviously there's more coming out. There you and go. So uh, maybe people so, that like them can collect more of them. There you go. So uh, let's go on here, uh, Tim. Let's see, um, Tim. We don't do chassis repairs. Uh, but there's a link on our webpage for some. Uh, I don't know what Louie's talking about there. Um, He's talking oh, about... Oh, oh, for people who repair. Yeah, yeah, so under the resources page, arcaderepairtips.com slash resources, we have a list under the modern repair services heading where you can find people who do. Tim, we want to throw um, Arcade Cup dot com out there chad does a great job arcadecup.com mm -hmm. if you guys are looking for that um there's a lot of others on there if you guys are looking for mod repair um all of it's on there so yep. resources um so arcade repair tips com slash resources there uh and that was i guess somebody was mail order service tim was saying if we have a, a mail order service for monitor chassis okay. so that's what it was um let's see uh youtube punk says the arcade one-up cabinets aren't going to hold up as well and i think that's true well i don't know i mean the crosley jukeboxes have held up well and i would think there's a limited market for crosley versus the arcade cab the arcade one-up cabinets oh, i think no. the market may be wider for arcade one-up i'm not for sure though jukeboxes have a good following so it's interesting um let's see oh they'll be 99.99 after christmas from joe Probably maybe so. uh they're not meant to last sadly and you know maybe that's the thing tim but <coughs> Excuse me, but I mean, it's actually pretty solid. It's a lot yeah, more solid. I've heard than people, people think. say flimsy and stuff. I would not call them flimsy. Now, thin wood, yes, thin, yes. yeah, it's thin, but they're not flimsy. I would, I would say they're. I mean, I think you could carry them around and they would hold up pretty well. I mean, uh, you know, I don't think of them I'm as flimsy to think at all. We kind of scratched it. Just we did, you know, by moving it around on the floor. But that was our. But we that was, was our mistake. We scratched plenty of. Uh, real arcade exactly so i mean too. but but yeah I, I know what they're saying when but there's not i would not call it it's not like you remember the one before uh that, that had the really thing yeah that yeah, was big like fun electronics that, that thing was. was like wobbly and that thing was only about i think it was only a quarter inch yeah uh, this thing's like at least a half inch yeah it's half inch so i mean that that makes a big difference in the thickness of the wood there mm -hmm. so it's not three quarter inch like yeah. most arcade games though okay uh danny says uh Yes, Danny, what's your guys' opinion on sit-down driving games? We like them. Yeah. No, <laughs> but uh, Tim, how about this? Give us your three favorite sit-down driving games. Uh, favorite of all time, I you remember when we had, I, I really liked the Pole Position 2 that pole we had. Pole Position 2 sit-down? It just was so much more fun to play sitting down. Right. Um, I like the Cruise and Blast that cruise we have blast. right that's now. Brand new. Yep. That's brand new and fun. But, you know, I'm kind of a San Francisco Rush to Rock okay. fan, okay. too. But I'm sure there's uh, there's not really so any for that me, I don't like. Daytona is, Daytona. In, is definitely in the list. I love Daytona USA. Um, I would say Cruising, the original Cruising, Cruising? USA okay. is uh, very near and dear to my heart. I love that one. And I was trying to think, um, if you're going to count Hydro Thunder, then it's, de yeah. it's definitely in there yeah. as well. If you're going like to count, like, I mean, it's kind of a sit-down driving game. Right, or H2 thing. Overdrive. Yes, both those. So, <laughs> you know a game that game. I like? Hard Driving. Hard Driving's Remember a Remember that game. was yes. a cool game when you did the loop. It was like right. kind of different. When it came out, I remember I wanted the sit-down one. Right, and I was trying to think of any others that we can think of just off the top of our heads. But I think those are the big ones. Daytona, Tim, is the one I remember yeah. the most, you know. Because um, up until recently, I think that um, pretty much every Dave & Buster's had like the 10-player sit-down Daytona. Right. <laughs> um, but, you know, they've upgraded it, and now they have a new Daytona. The Daytona mm -hmm. Classic, like you used to have at Chuck E. Yes. Cheese, I believe, is what they're going to uh -huh. in place of that. So same gameplay, updated hardware So right. is what you're getting with that. So good stuff. Uh, let's see. Um, Cruising USA, YouTube Punk says. Um, so that, I, again, I tell one you, of it was our so hard to uh, 
one thing we really had a hard time was putting MAME inside of one. Yeah. I don't know if anybody if anybody by better now with that. they probably have yeah, mastered that. Yeah, I was about to say that. there's there's a lot of uh, good forms on like arcade controls, build your own arcade controls dot com. That, and stuff that like was that. a tough one to me. Yeah, was building a main cabinet that would play more than one game. Yeah, and I can make it, it driving play. Game. Yeah, driving game. Yeah, there's um and part of it is because like some of the wheels on some games are 360 wheels, right, like what you are. have with pole position, and some of them are just like. 180 or 270 degree mm-hmm. wheels where they don't go the entire 360. Um, so, I mean, there's a lot of differences in those, and so that's part of it. So, Cruise and Blast, you know, I played a little bit. It is fun. Yeah. I like it. It's fun. So, I was just It may be that. my favorite of all time. Wow. Now, to say that. I mean, I like, I like the Cruising series, but that game is still, I enjoy playing it. I almost go. do daily. <laughs> <laughs> so, there you go. Uh, let's see. Feedback steering wheels also, he says. Um, let's see. I think hard driving was one of the first ones with feedback, with the feedback system okay. there, Tim. Uh, let's see what else. Did you guys ever see the arcade game where it's a NASCAR actual car you sit in and play? Yes. yes. So we had an arcade here named CyberZone, Tim. Uh-huh. They actually had I remember it. that. And it was big. Is that the one that actually had like three screens, too? I don't know how many screens I had. I can't remember. Yeah, I thought like... our, I can't remember if that one had the projection screen. Projection, or if it was three screen, I can't remember. But I remember just seeing this big NASCAR mm-hmm. car, basically in the arcade. Yeah. It, was, it was gigantic. So, um, oh, uh, text JYT says you can find the Konami chips here and JamaArcade.net. So oh, is where awesome. you, so he actually gave a link there, which is nice. Thank you for so, helping. Yeah, thank you for that. Out we your friend like over that. There. there you go. I was about to say another several places you can get them. I just can't remember any of them right now. So. There you go. Uh, Tim, I think that does it for that. So we have one more set of questions here, and then we're going to get to the discussion section. Or, no, 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 I take that back. All Tim's right. Christmas gift, I ah. think, is the next thing. Well, let's so, rush through this one. Yeah, so let's rush through this no, one. Sorry. <laughs> sorry whoever's question this is next. I apologize. Actually, we've got two here, Tim, and they're both from YouTube. Okay. And one of them is from the Headless Horseman, who's here tonight okay. with us. So uh, the first one, though, is from Ali. How do you get the sound from a JAMA harness? Yes, I know through the speakers, LOL, <laughs> but how is it hooked up? Thanks, buddy. So, Tim, before we moved on, how is the how is the uh, sound on a jamma harness hooked up? Well, um, you've got the positive and negatives are coming off two pins. What is it? Pin ten and eleven? No, I think it's, no, I think it's pin ten on both, both sides. sides. Okay, right. And so you got to connect them to the speaker. You should get sound. The problem is you might get a really loud sound. Right. So most of the time, you want to hook up a poten- go through a potentiometer or something so you can adjust that or resist it a variable resistor that right. would actually make that sound lower or even an amp right and tim uh you know holland computers has already made a potential for this variable resistor like you mentioned so uh if you want to add that or tim a lot of games give you the option to turn down the sound in the settings menu so right. that may be another way for you to go. We should mention that, Tim, some games have a audio connector on the harness or on a connector on the board. Or a volume knob. Right. Uh, especially, um, like, Street Fighter 2, Tim, has a stereo output on the board. Okay. If you hook it up through the jamma, you only get mono sound. But right. if you hook it up through the through the connector, you get stereo sound. Awesome. Um, I believe Tekken is like that. There's a couple of games, Tim, where the kick harness also has extra audio parts uh, or audio points on it. And... There may be connectors as well where you can hook up for stereo sound on some boards. It depends okay. on your board. So on most Yama games, though, Tim, pin 10 is going to be it. That's how you're going to hook up the sound. Once you hook up pin 10, you're good to go. Uh, so let's go ahead and look up uh, this next, next question here. Headless Horseman, thanks for answering, guys. Got one more question for Tim that okay. I probably should have included in with the Kiss Pinball question. Does Tim have any games of his in his own collection? Yeah. Sorry if this has been answered before. So, Tim... Um, I put a couple here that I knew you still had, but I wasn't sure what all you okay. had. So you got to tell me what you had. <laughs> well, most of mine are in storage right now. Um, I have, have had probably over, I'm going to guess. You if had I, as many as I have right now. Oh, well, at in some point in come through or another through yes. the door, somewhere as little as 50 would be low, maybe as much as 100. Just, you know, maybe kept for a short time. Oh, I think it's way more than that. <laughs> okay. Well, but, uh, now, I remember... As, as far as how many arcades you've had yeah, at one time, you've had, had... over the years. I was about to say... There's... Well, yeah, and then you include what we had at, like, the loan... That's store. what yeah. I'm saying. Oh, yeah. So, okay. The least number would be over, uh, over 100. Over 100, And it's right. probably closer to two. Yeah. But, uh, so I found a lot of games... But a few, you know, what we'll get to is the ones that just won't ever leave. You know, right. they're kind of there. And that's on my Miss Pac-Man game. I have a Tron. I have a Centipede. And I have um, a Williams multi-game. That's right. I forgot about that um, one. I didn't list that one. Sorry. I have a 60 of one in the garage mm-hmm. 
right now that's technically not mine, but maybe I'm trying to trade for that one. <laughs> but, uh, you know, so, oh, gosh, but you name it. You name a game, It's when, we've had some pretty rare games like a swimmer, or, uh, but, you know, I really miss games like Golden Tee. We always enjoyed that. If you watch a lot of the videos, you'll see I miss my Seawolf that I had. Um, some of my pinball games I wish I still had. Um, I know at one time you had Sinistar, Hook, 1942, Hook Pinball, 1942, um, Stargate Pinball, Mortal Kombat 2, which is now mine. Uh, uh -huh, let's see. Uh -huh. I'm trying to think of what else you I've had. I've had Donkey... You had like had, the entire Pac family. You had Junior yes. Pac... Um, Pac Man, Pac, Pac Man, um, and then um, Baby Pack. Yes, I've baby had a Baby Pack. pack. <laughs> um, let's see, Sinistar for sure. I've had an uh, Asteroids, Asteroids, Asteroids Deluxe, Asteroids Deluxe, Pole Position, Sit Down, Pole Position, Mach Three. Um, golly, what else? <laughs> I can't it's almost all easier. Gyrus. Yes. Uh, let's see, Donkey Kong, Tempest, Play Choice Ten. Yes. Uh, golly, I've had probably five or six Donkey Kong. Yeah, you've had a more. lot of Donkey Kongs. It seems like uh, two I love play the choice game. Tens. Two play choice tens. Yes. Um, let's see what else. Golly, I can't think of anything else at the moment. And the only I'm game. I'm trying to think of some rarer games that I've had. Area 51. Oh, yeah. Uh, play Lot Trainers. Uh, X Men vs. Street, Street Fighter. Marvel vs. Capcom. Um, Marvel vs. Capcom 2. Had a Star Blade. That's pretty rare. Yeah, oh, yeah. I forgot about Star <laughs> That's Blade. a monster game. Uh, game Show. Lethal Enforcers. Lethal Enforcers 2. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Uh, what else? <laughs> Golly, <laughs> Twister Pinball. Uh, we've had Cyber, a cap I, Cyber Sled. Yes, um, Captain America and the Avengers. Avengers um, had that one. Yeah, X Men. Um, uh, what was the one? Uh, Metal Slug. Metal Slug. Yeah, those. Neo Geos. We've had several Neo Geos come through. You've yeah, had several Neo Geos. Tons of Redemption through, Games, Crane Machines, Tekken's, Ski Ball Lanes, Soul Calibur. So obviously, <laughs> Tekken's and Soul Calibur. About through. every fighting game that's known to man. Yeah. Um, golly, is there anything else? Oh gosh, I've had a Joust cocktail. Oh cabinet. yeah, the Joust cocktail. I've golly. had a Joust. Now I've that Joust cocktail was a was a, was a Tekken a... two when we got it though. Yeah, I remember that. Um, Street Fighter twos. How many? Oh gosh, golly, I can't even think of all of them. Uh, Street Fighter twos. Just... Lots of Miss Pac Man. Yeah, lots eh, of Miss Pac Man. I mean, we could keep going, but you know, over over the time, it, but just some that have come and gone. You know, and uh, that's what was part of my joy there for a while was I would find them broken, fix them. And then sell them for profit usually most of the time. But also because I liked that, uh, I just like to fix stuff. Yeah. And then when I fixed it, I, I kind of got, I wouldn't play it very much. And then when it wasn't getting played, I usually would like to sell it to a player. Galagas. How many Galagas? Really, golly, oh my I gosh. And Galaxians. Yeah, and Galaxians. Oh, golly. Uh, <laughs> somebody asked 720. Did you ever have a 720? I don't remember one. No, what was that game we had, though? Smash TV? Smash TV, It was, yeah, like, right. in mint condition. Mm -hmm. uh, Brian is probably, or what was that guy's name? Sega Hang-On, several oh, hang-ons. Oh, gosh. Um, we had so many hang-ons at one right. time. It yeah. was, we had, a, a Ed Vanderveen gave us all, all his parts. parts. I remember that. We probably had 10 or 15 steering mechanisms for those. Outruns. Outruns. Uh, uh, Hydro Thunders. You name it, we have... Wow, it's almost like I said. Arctic Thunders. Oh yes. Uh, golly. Cruisins, like, cruisins. Of those. <laughs> um, golly, I can't even think of all of them. <laughs> it's just games. funny when you know over time. Um, plenty of centipedes, millipede. Ever had a ghost and goblins? Yep. Yes. <laughs> I was about to say that one's come through. Yeah. I uh, got one on my radar. So they got uh, Shinobi. I remember we had a Shinobi at yes. one time. Uh, golly. Um, man, I can't even think I of It might be easier to ask what game, game we didn't we, have. We didn't <laughs> well, 720. That what? one, uh, we, I, I can't believe. You know what? We were you know, I'm not, I don't, I did not have a work in 720. You I will say that one? there was one in storage. I think it was Stan's. But it, remember, it was like, uh, yeah, we had a. It was we. I think we had one in storage, and we ended up getting rid of, or he got rid of it. Yeah. Um, I don't uh, know. He, we've had so many games come through. I just can't. Yeah. Wizard of War. You forgot that one. Oh yes. Uh, uh, we love to play that kicks, one. Kicks. And kicks. there's a reason why there's not a kicks in here today. Right. Uh, I never <laughs> want to fix that thing again. Yeah, Golly, we worked never. on that one a lot. Never. Okay. Well. Okay. Oh, uh, what are your grails again? So, um, says. well, I go back to some that I wish I had a Star Castle, I had Omega Race. That's right, Star Castle. And I golly. really miss the Star Castle for some reason. Sinistar was game. one of my favorites. Um, I missed the, 
if I could go you've back... You've had a lot of your grails is the problem, right? Yeah, and, and uh, I'm... And you kind of went away from them. And, and guys got to understand, I'm not a real player. I'm right. not... Um, I'm not very good. Right. <laughs> I, there's a lot of games. It's Sinistar is hard. Oh, yeah. I've had, and then we've had plenty of uh, Williams games. Every oh, Williams yeah. game made, I've owned every one of them. Um, but, and I'm, I stink at every one of them. <laughs> I'm no good at Defender. I can't play more than two minutes. And so. Uh, Defender is hard. Asteroids, Asteroids, Deluxe, all those. Um, going back, I wish I would have kept my Star Wars pinball, the. One with the R two head in it. Yeah, the I don't know what East. the Data East one. We sold. Um, we sold it to somebody. I traded it. I, I we had remember. a Terminator uh, gun game. Oh, that's right. Okay, we've had the one. one. Um, gosh, what's all those gun games? I've had just about every gun game. Oh well, we're we're not <laughs> pressing. <laughs> yeah, it's just there's very little games unless they're pretty ultra rare. That we I had a lunar lander. Yeah, that's I mean, right. Okay. There's not much that I haven't had in the collection at some point, but that's just it. I'm not a real player. There's a few games that I really like to play. I like to play Tron. Yeah. And uh, that I really like to play. I actually like to play Gyrus. It's probably yeah. one. There's only one game I could say I was decent at was Gyrus because uh, I played it a lot in the arcade while everybody else was playing Dragon Slayer, which we've owned a Dragon Slayer. Yep. And we've owned a Space Ace, and mm. we've also owned... Dragon Slayer 2. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> we're, going, we're getting off I was again. I about to say, that's way, you can go through games. It's flooding through some good memories, but at the same time, I never was a player, so once I got them fixed and restored, I like to get them in the hands of people who love to play them. Right. And I always found that guy that was like... I'm Darren, who got the Smash TV. That was his favorite game, and I had the mentest one I've ever seen. And he still has it probably in his collection today. And he always said that, thank you for giving me that game. It meant a lot more to him than it ever would to me. Right. So, as I didn't play it. It looked great. I right. knew it looked, and people, everybody that saw it was like, wow, that's awesome. How to Popeye was a no Oh, bezel. Operation Wolf. Um, yeah. Yeah, we've had a couple of those. So, uh, Gauntlet or Spy Hunter? Yeah. Definitely Spy Hunter. Yes. Uh, Gauntlet, Gauntlet too. I was trying, You had a Gauntlet, too? Yeah. Maybe before I came along. I was trying yep. to remember. No, you had a Gauntlet. Yes, that's right. I did. Uh, let's mm-hmm. see. Uh, De- Demolition Derby 4-player. Ooh, three player one. What's the three player one? Ivan Stewart. Ivan Crawford. Stewart. Uh, we had yeah. that one. Dimlin Dursey four player. No, nope. never nope. had that, that one. one. There you go. Uh, so I was gonna say my grails at my grails. And what's funny is oh, every ahead. game we're mentioning we've worked on. Yep. So you know that's why sometimes uh, we. It, but it's hard to remember everything, you know. And yeah. then some of them like the kicks. We spent a lot of time working on it. And I'll never own an arc kicks again. I'm, I'm happy with the 16 one board. The sound's not perfect, but I'm happy with it. It works. And great Gorf, on we've won Gorf. Oh, Gorfs, yeah. Golly, a couple of those. Yeah. Um, so my grails were Soul Calibur, Mortal Kombat, Mortal Kombat 4, Street Fighter 2, uh, and Mortal Kombat 2. Those, are, I mean, I'm, I grew up in the 90s more. I mean, I played the classics, but a lot of the stuff I wanted mm-hmm. was 90s. I still have my Soul Calibur board and the Soul Edge cabinet I picked up in the last episode, Tim. That board's going in that cabinet. And so mm-hmm. it's just a matter of time. I just need to do it. Um, the Mortal Kombat 2 I bought from Tim. The Street Fighter 2 we got out of uh, Canton. Uh, we did like a deal with a guy in Canton and we yeah. got Street Fighter 2 out of it. Uh, and oh my then, gosh, I yeah. brought, just hit a memory flashback there. Sorry, that's even more games. Wow. Uh, and then um, I had a Mortal Kombat 4 I at one time. There's probably very few uh, fighting games that we haven't owned because that was what that you was really liked. And it, they were we had an cheap. X-Men versus Street Fighter. We had the four-player X-Men. Remember yep. that big beast? Mm-hmm. Um, but um, that's because they were cheap at the time. So when we were going to auctions in the early 2000s, Tim, nobody wanted those games. I, Street you know, Fighters are going for Now that we're nothing. talking about it, I probably have had over 50 games given to me. Yeah. Probably over 50. Just because people, they were broken. Had a Wave Runner? Yeah. Oh, Wave Runner. A big, I a about big, a wave runner. big jet ski game. Okay. Okay, that's enough. I'm stopping this right here. It's like we could do this all night. I don't want to do yeah, it Somebody asked the question, right? But I will say this. On the Mortal Kombat 4, I had one and I never played it. Right. And I sold it. And I sold I bought. I sold it for 400 which is what I had in it, which is cheap now. I should have held on to it. Yeah. And I remember when I, I bought it, you're like, you're going to put the plaque on this one and it says it's yours forever. And I said, yeah, and then I ended up selling it. Because, huh. you know, you don't play it, and it sits out in your garage. That was before I had the game room, Tim. They were all in my garage, and I just yes. didn't want to do it. Anyway. We got in that pinball deal. That's right. With the Corvette. Yeah, there you go. So, moving on. Corvette okay. Corvette pinball. Yeah, we're talking <laughs> you're talking about other things. Um, oh, Joseph just gave us 20 bucks too, Tim. Wow. Golly. Thank you, guys. It, 
you guys are overly generous. Thank you yes. guys so much. Joseph, thank you so much for that. That's awesome. Uh, and Louis also thanked him. Okay, <laughs> so there you thank go. you, Louis. Um, Paul says, thanks for the donation. Oh, hey, look at this. Somebody else said, thanks for the donation. Yeah, look at this. Great. Um, JR says, I used to play Demolition Derby game at Cedar Points Arcade where they got rid of it. Uh, sad, sad day for me. So there you go. I think it's kind of cool. Everybody has that one game. I've had a kangaroo. Yeah, kangaroo. <laughs> yeah, you <laughs> stop saying Well, the reason, the reason is... Dig Dug. You forgot to mention that yes, one, too. Yes, Dig Dug. I've had every, every Williams game, every Atari game, just about. But, you know, it's like, what game... Popeye. Yes, Sorry. every game that, you know, you re- what you remember. I remember those games that nobody were playing because... Everybody else was, you know, was waiting in line for these other games. I'm over there playing Kangaroo, you know. I'm pretty good at Kangaroo. <laughs> I remember when we got that uh, that kangaroo. Yeah, we've had a couple of it kangaroos. It smelled like crazy, but yeah. it was the cleanest game ever. There you go. Well, you know, I don't know how sometimes. it, you know, most of the time a smelly game is a dirty game. This was a clean game and it stunk. I don't you think we ever pin- defumed it. You had a pinball machine before Stargate. What was it? You remember? I've had a Star Trek pinball. It I've was had, a Star Trek, maybe. Yeah. So I can't remember. And we had the Close Encounters. Close Encounters, uh, Atlantis. Atlantis. Uh, uh, the okay, we can't, we, can't, we can't do the same one. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. I think it's right. time. So, Tim. Oh, yeah. I forgot. I would have cut that list short a long time ago. That's right. Merry yeah. Christmas. Merry Christmas, Jonathan. I know you've been busy. So yes. you, you'll get your Christmas gift to me at some point. Yes, okay. probably Christmas Eve. But, you, can, yeah. you, can, you can buy it with all the money that we got donated in the live show. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, all the bank you're making over at Mr. Gaddy's. This is the only day I've had off in like three weeks. Well, good thing you're getting so, a gift on it then. Yeah, and I'll work today. Okay, so, but. so guys, this is the annual Tim's Christmas gift. And as you can see, there's a theme going here. Uh, yes, I see this. So yeah, so you like my ears. Yes. So there you go. But um, so Tim... Merry Christmas. All right. Merry Christmas. So, well. I'm good at taping. That's like my skill. So, yeah. sometimes opening my packages is very difficult. Right. But I also know that whatever this box says is probably not it. Well, so that's I'm, true. It's only I'm not even going to. So, here, I'm going to take this. All right. And I uh, and also know you like to get multiple gifts. So yeah. Well, it's always, it, me, there's uh, always the same thing every year, guys. I mean, it doesn't really <laughs> change if you guys. If you've been watching for over a year, you know there's a couple things that I request. <laughs> <laughs> and they, they never get old for me. The first one is one of those. So, Tim, um, you know what this is. Yes, you already have one. I do. But you can never have too many of these. So, and why don't I, you tell the fine people I at home what you got? broke the button. This is, um, I collect and like flashlights. And this is the brightest one that we have ever seen. It is a brand. It uh, is a brand. It is the Nebo Slim. If you like flashlights, let's see if this guy comes on. I'll show you hmm. that for a little bitty guy, without blinding you guys, this is a really bright LED. So imagine when I'm up inside a game work, and it also has a magnet. Did you guys see that stick? It sticks. Well, maybe I could do it up here when you're working on or stuff. Up, up here. This is metal. Oh, there you go. So I'm working on something. I can get in there. I had one of these, and I broke the button on it recently. It also, I'll turn it off. You guys can see it comes with its own USB charger. There's the USB. So you don't have to buy batteries. So you don't have to buy batteries. And the charge lasts, usually for me, working on arcade games all the time, this lasts about three or four days. Did you know it has a hook in it, too? Like, um, they were showing this. You see this little hook right here? This is a little different than my last one. Okay. So, you can hang it up inside the game or whatever. And I showed you the magnet part of it. But, like, when you're working up inside of a game, you find something metal, and then you're working. So, anyway, if you guys haven't uh, seen one of these, Jonathan New, I have one. I love it. I would take ten of these. Uh, they're great. <laughs> the Nebo presents. They're not. They're not. N e b o. Um, they're not the cheapest. They're ones, not right? inexpensive. <laughs> right. I was about to say they're not. Very, they're kind of pricey N-E-B-O, for what they are. But they. The one I've had has lasted, except for I broke the button, and it's just a plastic cover. I thought. I think I thought that's where it charged, and I actually peeled it off and lost it. But that's where it comes in. It's very, very bright, very bright, and the Nebo. and a great. Great gift. Thank you, Johnson. You're you know Christmas. the stuff that I like. It's not your first Christmas, right? No. I... And the next thing, Johnson always likes to get me T-shirts because this, what I wear on the live show, is probably something he gave me one before. <laughs> uh, over the years, the sizes have gotten bigger. <laughs> and so thank I you wasn't going to say anything. Thank you for getting a very big one. I got the Missile Command shirt. I've never had a Missile Command thank shirt. 
I think I've almost had, you've almost bought me a shirt more for every game I've had. But Pretty never, much. <laughs> and we've had a missile come in, we too. Have. So, <laughs> if we didn't mention that, yes. I, we did, I don't think we mentioned missile we, command. So there we you go. do you like the missile command so that we've had. <laughs> so, now i got the shirt to match the game I used to own. Okay, one more thing. One more thing. Got another t-shirt. And this one. I think you used to have this shirt, but I was like, I bet he doesn't know where it is. So I was like, I'm going to oh, go ahead. Oh, yeah, and yes, it. yes. I have not seen this shirt in a long time. Yeah. I don't think I could fit in that one. Say. <laughs> Definitely a large again. Centipede SWAT team. So how cool is that, guys? Comment in the chats. You know I'll be wearing these on the next live shows there coming up. So, and I'm going to throw this up here because guess what? I got links to all of them. So, all right. uh, if you guys want uh, t what Tim got for Christmas, or if you want to give somebody, give somebody this, a, yeah, that's a great it. gift, uh, we have the links here. And they're also below in the show notes so you guys can see them. So, Tim got the Centipede SWAT Team t shirt. He got the Missile Command t shirt, which I personally like the Missile Command t shirt. I, I love that. That shirt. was awesome. And then a Nebo Slim flashlight. Now, Tim, I think the Nebo Slim will be the most useful of all of these, but it's always good to have arcade shirts. So, um, the Nebo Slim is, is fantastic, guys. It's probably the best flashlight we've ever seen yeah and um it was turned on to us by somebody's house we went over to do a repair and he's like hey uh you were like i need a flashlight because you never have one and he's like hey i got this one over here and he pulled out a nebo slim tim and ever since he gave it to you yes he was nice enough to give it to tim and ever since then it's been tim's favorite flashlight so i was like he can never get enough of these guys no don't look directly at it it will blind you it is very very bright to led but not all, you know, one thing about LED lights, a lot of times they don't project wide. Right. This one has, let me just it show without turning it on, yeah. has this special lens that actually helps it. instead of doing like a laser light, it actually, you guys saw behind me, you know, it lights up a lot of that area for a little bit of light. So there you go. Now, uh, we should mention too that this is also a phone charger, which is why it has the two USBs on it. So this <clears> one's for actually charging the Nebo Slim, and then this one's for charging your phone. Yes. So if you need, it can be a portable phone charger as well if you need that. So it is cool. I love those things. Yeah. So you just um, charge it like you're charging your phone. Uh, charge lasts three or four days for me, and that's using it pretty heavily. I forget. I'm like, oh, I better charge this thing. You left it over here, in fact, and I know you're missing it. Like the last, yes. when, I think when yeah, we did you found the, it. yeah, I found it when we were when I was cleaning up, and I, I brought it to you at uh, Mr. Gay's when I came by because I'm like, I know he's missing. Yes, this thing. I was. I thought I lost it forever. I was so sad. <laughs> well, there you go. Now you got two. Uh, you went from having none to, to having two. So. I can't wait to. Um, I let the tech at my store. Uh, use mine the other day. I might just let him keep it. I got a new one. Yeah, you got a brand new one. Yeah, so, so, like I said, not uh -huh. the cheapest thing, Tim, but they're worth every right. penny. Yes, they are way better than the average, especially for working on games, guys. Uh, tell us what you think about it. But anyway, there, Johnson included the links there. It's great Christmas presents. Uh, one box, three items. Tim. Never, uh, you never disappoint me there. Thank you, Johnson, so much. Um, but. I always love flashlights. That's a, I, like, I got a collection. I bet you have given me 20 flashlights over the years. I gave you like and a I, really nice one. I still like have little guy. Them. Yeah, I was about to say. He's around. Okay. I know he is. I think I, it was last I, Christmas. I go into my tool shed. They'll see one. I've got them in the house. I've got them in the closet in case the electricity goes out. There's one Nothing in my door. Nothing compares to the Nebo, though. But I have to say the Nebo has become my favorite by far. There you go. So um, let's go here. Let's see. Everybody uh, says awesome gifts. Very cool. Very cool. Um, uh, badass t-shirts. <laughs> um, let's see. Awesome. Headless horseman. What sizes do you guys wear? Do you want, do you want to okay. reveal that? You don't have to. This is from YouTube Punk. But, uh, I wear a large. Yeah. A large. No, you're not two. You're <laughs> one. That's a one. Well, two fits better. The problem is not the one being big enough. Long enough. I have a. I'm long waisted. Right. So I usually a one tall really fits the best shirt that fits me is a one tall. There you go. That's the best. But a two X will sometimes is bigger and kind of dressy on me, but it does is longer. Right. But those are pretty long, so right. that will be that will be better. A lot of times they make these like the athletic fit ones are a little bit longer. You'll yeah. notice uh, stuff like that. Okay, Tim. We mentioned earlier that there's no debate this this month because right. it's Christmas. Yeah. And we don't do debate. But gonna... guess what we are going to do? We are going to discuss, not debate, what it takes to get a new restaurant with a game room open for business. Because this is what you've been doing for the last month, right, Tim? The last couple months. Has, and it is, uh, it's tough. I can tell you right now. Isn't well, it? well, hold on. I got to bring it. Look, I don't have the cool arcade debate divider, but check this out. 
Hey, we're together. <laughs> okay. So, um, and I, I've even got the little thing. Tim's experience opening a new Mr. Gaggs location. What do you think about that? That's awesome. Okay. Well, we'll take a second here and we'll do I'm what we normally I'd do. I have to get in my box. So. There you go. <laughs> That's right. We can, we can be in a box together. <laughs> we can together. get along together. That's right. Exactly. So, I'll give it, we'll do a second here and we'll reset and then we'll come right back. Well, hello, everybody, and welcome to the arcade discussion for this month, Tim. It's really not a debate because this is... Christmas time after all, Tim, and we don't want to debate on Christmas time, but we know over the last month, Tim, since we did the last live show, that you have been employed by Mr. Gay's Pizza and have been trying to get a location open for them. And Tim, you've done it. Yes. You actually got it open, which is fantastic. But Tim, what all went into getting this new location open? Well, one thing we want to discuss, because we get this question a lot, I would like to own my own arcade game. Everybody, or our, my oh, own arcade, arcade, you right. know, and everybody always thinks, you know, you'll just... Open the doors and people will come. It's like building the field of dreams. You just build it and people show up. Well, you know, that's not the easy part uh, at all. In fact, it's very tough to get, you got all your contractors and construction and you got a lot of legal stuff. You got uh, things that have to be signed off on it, even as far as the games and the license and the um, license to operate the, in Texas. You guys are, that are operators are familiar with the game tax stickers that go on there. Many states have stuff like that. So you kind of need to know a few things before you just jump in the water and be prepared, you know, because there's a lot of stuff that can happen along the way, stuff to um, that you almost expect that something's going to happen. It's not going to be smooth and easy and fun. Uh, it's very tough. To take a building from a shell and gut it and have, uh, even though you know we physically didn't do the work, um, we did have to do some physical work, but you know a lot of it was done by contractor. But you got to stay on top of everything and know what's going on, know the codes in your area, know what's uh, what's allowed. Learn how to read blueprints as much as you read schematics. It's a good tip. Learn, I've learned a lot about that. So let's go ahead and let's move into that kind of these different phases. So there, obviously there was a lot of construction. Okay, so when I walked in and you had just been hired on, I walked into the building. It was literally just a shell. Like right. It was completely empty. There was basically nothing in it. The only thing they had built at that point was the kitchen area. Like uh -huh. the little middle section. They right. have not built out anything else. And so, obviously, over the last month, they have completed all that. It looks great. And, Tim, we're going to show a video at the end of the segment so people can see. Right. But just tell us what went on with the construction. How did it go? Did it take longer than you thought? Or was every, it faster? Or, or you know, what went on? One day, you would walk in there, and there would be 30 people. And you're like, there would be no walls, uh, no drywall. Then, and, and there would be 30 people working. And all, next thing you know, walls are up. You're thinking, wow, this thing's going to be done in a week. The next day you walk in and two guys and they're just kind of sweeping and you're like, what's going on? A um, lot of the different contractors, they have steps, you know, that you do this. One thing that I didn't like that they did, and I'll mention the pros and cons. One of the cons was, or if you're building any kind of building yourself, they did the flooring, one of the flooring, the first things. Well, everything got dumped on the floor, drug across the floor. It took us a while just to get the floor back and clean after all the construction. A lot of times they'll do flooring last. You'll see if you tore up your floor in your kitchen, you probably would see paint splatters and stuff all over the place. They cover that up with the flooring. They didn't do that this time. Uh, we also had a first health inspector that comes in and looks at your plans and they say, well, this plan, they know how to read them, and they'll say, this area right here has to include something. They might mark it down. Then they come through about halfway through, see where you're going, and then they can make some changes then, and they did. They told us, uh, you got to have this here, or you got to have that there, or if you're going to serve food, you have to have a washable ceiling or something above you, and this is going to have to be extended. And so, again, they're men in the plans. Another thing I would say is always going to cost more money than you're expecting. Whatever you budgeted in, uh, know that it's going to cost more than that because you're going to run across things and be ready to roll with the punches because the hardest thing is every day you're not open, you're spending money and you're not making money. So the goal is to get open as soon as possible, but you don't want to jump the gun. It's also very hard to hire people within a three weeks time because some people have to give two weeks notice and they can't start the next day. Other people need a job that day, but you can't hire them because you're not ready. So they are get another job before you're building us through. So what you need to do is really work on the people that you're going to hire. 
be really working on that for it takes a while do a service whatever you got to do be interviewing people find out their needs and some people we could hire a little quicker and we had some cleanup jobs they could do they might not have been their job later but they could help clean scrub do whatever find those people that were willing to do whatever and then the hiring process i interviewed over 130 people and hired 60 so in three weeks time the guy if you don't know imagine sitting down with somebody doing an interview 130 times 15 minutes each that's a lot of time consuming time and to be able to say the same spiel over and over and over because there's certain legal things you can say there's certain legal things you can't say Certain things you want to cover, like what their uniform is, uh, what you expect out of them, and certain things you don't need to cover so you can't talk too long and you don't want to rush. But things I always look forward, and this is a tip for people watching this and watching later, look for the person that will smile at you and look you in the eye and thank you for the interview and give you a firm handshake. They may not have a lot of skills on their resume, but they know how to talk to people and pleasing your customers is going to come first. You can teach them a lot of skills, but you can't always teach them how. But at the same time, don't overlook people just because they're shy. We had jobs we talked about that were good for shy people or people that didn't like a lot of interaction. And some of them are great workers. So, and, and another thing is everybody looks good in an interview, John. Everybody looks good on paper. It's like a first date. Yeah, I, it's just like a first date. And so be willing to do a second or third interview. Ask those open-ended questions, and people will tell you way more than you ever want to know about them. You know, I always ask them, tell me something you liked about your last job. Tell me something you disliked. And sometimes they will go, the questions you cannot legally ask, they will be glad to answer for you. Uh, what's your home life? You know, what, what's it like? What are your hobbies? What do you like to do? You know, and they will spill the beans. So being a good listener is important in those interviews. So, but hiring the best people I think are, is key because equipment's going to fail. Games are going to break. Uh, ovens are going to go down. Ice machine's going to quit working all those, but you can't have people breaking down. If people break down, your business will break down. People will be more understanding on something that's broken than they will be about a person that's broken or a person that could lose uh, your reputation is on the line and your business's name. So hire those people who are going to hold the utmost standards and not steal from you, not uh, take advantage of people. And that's the one thing we've been getting back. People have said, you know what? I can tell they might have messed up or when they messed up, they told me they were sorry. But... Over and over, I really like the people that you've hired. I really like this pe this person. You know, they're so friendly. You can't uh, you can't put a value on that, and and don't be afraid to pay them what what they're worth. You know, and so I hope that we've been able to accomplish all that. Well, we're not a hundred percent. I'm sure we'll have some that some people you think are going to be better in sliced bread, and they don't work out for nothing. Some people there was one guy just like man, I don't know about this guy. I was really on the fence. I'm so glad I hired him. You know, sometimes just trust your gut. And, and another thing, I try not to hire everybody that looks or acts like me. We hired a lot of diversity, a lot of different people, because I'm that kind of person. I want to be teachable. They might have something to offer me. They have something. They're better in an area maybe that I am. If you hire a bunch of many yous, you're going to get some good things, but you're also going to get a lot of faults in that you probably don't realize you have. You ever want to know uh, your faults, just ask your spouse or significant other, <laughs> and they will tell you. They'll so, be honest. So that's Your mama, don't ask your mama. She'll, <laughs> she'll, she she'll won't tell you. She'll talk right? It's kind of like, um, you know, those singing shows where it's like they say, well, my mama says I sing sound really right, good. Right, I sound really good. I'm yeah, awesome, right. I'm great. My church, man, they really, they really, yeah, think yeah. I'm something. Right? The church will never, the church choir always votes on me every year, you know, it's like, because, <laughs> you know, they, they feel like they're doing some act of God merciful <laughs> by doing that. But anyway, so you covered construction and personnel. So yeah, those are two places that I kind of want to talk Construction personnel, with you. you know, you can't, you just can't, you can't rush certain things. But then other things you almost have to stay really on top of to make sure they're getting done. Make sure that the legality issues, those are the things you don't want to get stuck because some of them can right up until the day before we open, 
um, you know, there's things that uh, if they weren't done, wouldn't pass. So know those things. You can hang a picture on the wall later, but you can't, you got to pass your plumbing inspection. You got to, and you want to work in a safe environment anyway. So you want to also don't rush the inspections. I look forward to inspections because if there's a problem with say our fire inspection or plumbing inspection, I want them to find it before we open because then I can get the per plumber or the or whoever the construction was to fix it. I don't sit back and go, I hope everything, of course, everybody wants to pass, but at the same time, I'd rather find out then and treat people with respect like that. If they're in a position of authority or the health department, I talk to them like they're average people. They're just doing their job. I've never had one of them get on to me about something that wasn't in a rule somewhere. They're just following the rules. So I'm a rule follower so, you know, those are things. So I would watch the legalities. And now, specifically with arcade games, here's something, Johnson. If, so we're moving into equipment. Yeah, if you're, in, if you're in the state of Texas, let me tell you how it works. Number one, you have to have a license to operate arcade games, and you have to have a tax sticker. I had no idea it would take over a month to get those and tons of paperwork. So I had to fill all that out. I rushed down to get it. We got ours in the Friday before the sun, the Monday that we opened. So last Friday, oh, we just got our stickers That's in. That's the government for you. That very, they <laughs> do not, they do not get in a hurry. But they're average folks too. One thing I did was I, I know they like to cut cost. I helped them cut the cost when I sent mine in. I sent a FedEx return label with the shipping overnight that we had. I could track. So I said, when you go to ship it, here's a shipping label. He didn't have to package all that stuff up in a box. Uh, he was able, uh, actually, I emailed it to him. He was able to print it. That sa He said, that saved you a couple days right there. So little things like that, if you work with people, they will work with you. But um, we barely got that one in. So you got to make sure we have to have a license to fix our own games. You can, yes, you can get a license and not be able to repair your games. So look for those things. Make sure that all your... And then you can't underestimate the POS issues, which would be your area, Jonathan, of making sure that all that's tested. It's okay. I learn on the fly, but I'm more of the person that likes to be prepared. And you can't prepare for everything, but at least knock out as many problems or things. You should be practicing, practicing, practicing before you open. Okay. And uh, I'll be glad to take any questions on that, or if you have any more questions, Jonathan. So I was going to say, so let's talk about the equipment. Now, your game setup, obviously, I think we talked about last time, Betson came in and set up y'all's game systems, right? Yes, and what their agreement was with them was that we would buy all the games from them. They are a distributor for many manufacturers, so we might have several different brands of games. Think of it like cars. We got Fords, Chryslers. Uh, BMWs, Audis, Hyundais, uh, you know, we got all those, but they sold us all of them. So they actually came and helped us set it up. They actually videoed it. I hope one day we can show the video of everything yeah. set <laughs> up in all, time yeah. motion. And uh, then they helped to make sure they were all up and working, which was a big relief to me uh, to not have to do that. So absolutely. So, and uh, it looks like they set up everything properly. Everything's working. Now, it, somebody asked, are you guys up and running? Yes, we yes. we started on uh, Monday. This is our fourth day, and we'll show a video here in just a little bit of. Now, what about what we did. speaking of equipment? What about kitchen equipment? So ovens and things. Did you purchase that? Did the owner purchase? The that owner food? purchased it, and they're very expensive <laughs> because they make you. That's what makes you the money, like sure. a pizza oven and stuff. One thing to consider if you're ever building a pizza place or something like that is that oven is monstrous. You actually move the oven. It was easier to. Uh, put it the ovens one of the first things to come in because you built the walls around it wow that that thing stuck there i don't know how you get it out of there but if you had to do that later piece, by piece i guess yeah if you would do it later it would have been a big pain this way it was a lot easier so think of those things anything that's monstrous or big uh, having a back roll up door and stuff like that or monster games or something which you guys will see in the video we do have some really big games um, that was nice that we could get those in there like that um, but yeah, you got to know your kitchen equipment. And the problem is, is that bringing in, er in early it collects a ton of dust. So constantly cleaning it almost daily 
will help help them run better. We weren't always able to do some of the games, and they gave us some problems at first because of the dust. The games do not like dust. It's not our friend. So okay, let's talk. Let's go back to Betson real quick. Would you overall? How would you rate the experience with Betson as far as the setup and everything for them? Did you feel like they did a pretty decent job at it? I think so. They had some very experienced guys that uh, knew what they were doing. The problem was, I think the contract was a little misleading, and I'm just being honest in front of the whole world here. I would give them about a B plus. The contract to me said, we will stick around for the first few days. I'm thinking the first few days are open. Yes. They installed it three weeks ago and stuck around for a few days making sure everything was installed, but they weren't there the day we for opened. For the opening. And that hurt because I did have some games that were down. I was too busy in the back or running the other side to go repair them, although I could. I kind of, that's one area I would have probably got that in a little bit more writing better i would have had somebody unless you've got a really good tech already i would that's free and can definitely stay on top of that i wouldn't hesitate against using them because it was nice i've been through hundreds of game installs and they're not fun and they're fast and they're furious and something always goes wrong but um i would definitely use them for that but i would stipulate in that contract that they need to have a tech there for the first few days you're open for business there's a lot of difference in that and just playing around with nobody there there you go okay so uh guys if you guys have any questions for tim i think he covered pretty much everything in that tim about it how to open up basically how to open up your mr gaddy's pizza locations so. yeah basically or any kind of business arcade i think number one these these terms of day, a lot of people just think it's going to be quick easy well planned out plans make our best you know what kind of cup flooring you're going to have are you going to have carpet uh, you know, what's it going to look like? Are you going to vacuum? Are you going to mop every night? Those are things to take in consideration in the design phase. Some of you have probably been designing a game room in your head for years. Write it out. Have it on paper. Have somebody draw it up. Um, take your time and, uh, and hire a good architect helps too. There you go. So we got a couple of things over here. Okay. Um, Mr. Silverball Mania says uh, hi from the Buckeye State. Hello. So there you go. Uh, he says, I ha oh, okay. That's a question. We'll get to that here in a okay. second. Uh, so glad Tim took the job. Sounds like an awesome experience so far from YouTube Punk. Is that right? Yes. There you go. I would say it's a great experience that now that you went through it, there are a lot of things I would do different. Um, I definitely uh, would probably wait till the construction is way, really done, mm -hmm. then come back and try to hire some people. Uh, not We really pushed the limit on opening versus, you know, you got people that need jobs. Even now, they're waiting to get paid for the first time. You know, I want them to stick it out. And once they start getting some paychecks, I think they'll be fine. Okay. Well, uh, Tim, I think we're going to wrap it up here, unless there's anything else that you want to talk about before we uh, before we sign off here. No, I do think that a standalone arcade is going to be very tough today. Even with the coolest games, you're going to need another hook, whether it be uh, laser food, tag or alcohol. food or, yeah, or barcade or whatever you're talking about doing. I don't think if I was anybody out there contemplating this, I would open up a standard arcade with just games and think that that was going to make it. I think it would be a very foolish thing to do. Even in some of the best, I mean, you don't even see mall arcades anymore. Right. Because rent is, ex is so expensive. But having a good location and paying a little higher rent, uh, you can make up that rent in a great location you know, what is a realtor always says, location, location, location. It really does make a difference. I love our location. I love where we're centrally located. I love how easy it is to find those hole-in-the-wall places that are going to save you a lot of rent also will cost you a lot of sales. So be careful where you rent, who you rent from, and how picky they are, and how much they are willing to do. we got also got a great landlord, you know. We'll show the picture or, or if uh, you guys have seen some pictures I've been posting of the outside, they did all that for us. So that was awesome. Know who your landlord is. Know what they expect from you as far as what you're going to repair uh, and what they will be willing to do or how much they're going to clean up the outside, who mows the grass, that kind of stuff. Make sure and get all that nailed down and everything needs to be in writing. There you go. I and a law, you need a good lawyer too. I was going to say that's a good advice for life, I think. Yeah. <laughs> everything needs to be in yeah. writing. Know a lawyer, sell them a game. Well, Tim, Whatever. I'm sorry if we disappointed people in the fact that we didn't debate. 
for this month, but we hope you got some great information about how to open your own location, regardless of what business it is. If it has a game room in it, Tim gave some wonderful information on personnel, about equipment, and about um, construction, all that good stuff. So uh, thank you guys for tuning in. And if you have any other questions for Tim, we'll be happy to take them on the next live show. Or you can send them to us on Facebook or Twitter, and Tim will help you out. Guys, we want to thank you for joining us for the Arcade Discussion segment, and we hope to see you soon. Take care, everybody. Thank you. Okay, Tim, I think that's it. We're going to show the video? Yeah, you want to show the video? Yeah, let's show the video. Show video real quick. And I'll just kind of walk them through it. got to be quiet while we're doing it here. All right, well, I mean, it's got your voiceover already, well, I, so. I can do, I'll redo that voiceover. How about okay, that? You want, okay, you want, you want to redo it? Here, yeah. Redo. Okay, I'll let just you because, do it. Just because. Oh, okay. Hang on, hang on a second. Good. Okay, now you can do it. Okay, this is walk, walking in the door. There's a photo, right, photo booth. You guys can see there's a lot of crane machines on the left. That is the water game, the Iceman game. Uh, there is an air hockey game. Air hockey's always make good monk. Uh, there's a Rabbits of Hollywood. Uh, I found out that that was the wrong manual. Um, there's a bunch of Rabbits games. There's our four-player Halo, which I think is our prize game. And uh, there's Walking Dead, Jurassic Park, a couple of basketball games. This game right here, if you want to, can you go back and pause that? Uh, we'll just uh, we'll talk about it here in a minute. I want to talk about that Connect Four basketball. Let's Bounce is a very fun game. The Double Big Bass uh, Spinners, Wheel of Fortune is right there. Grand Piano Keys. Uh, the biggest money makers, that guy right there, the Marvel versus... Uh, or the DC. I mean, sorry, the DC, DC Universe or whatever Universe. And there's our prize counter, you guys. You can see how full and stocked and good looking that is. The kiosk, birthday rooms to the left. and as Which I is where we're going to do the live show tonight. Turn to the right, <laughs> and this is our front counter. I think I'm going to zoom in on the buffet prices. So it's uh, seven ninety nine for adults. There's our Tyler, Texas sign. Uh, clean Buffet. This is some of our local schools. And I say you have signs for all the local schools. Yes, uh, which is a big deal to be involved in your local community. There's the buffet bar right there. Salads, pastas, buffets, and I mean pizzas, of course, and desserts. Love our flooring. And that's it. It looks like that's about yeah, it. Is it wood tile? It is a yeah wood tile. It's okay. actually a tile. Yeah, I was about to say it it's looks pretty like durable it. and pretty tough. Uh, but anyway, you guys can comment on the games. Uh, the one that I want to talk about is that Connect Four right. basketball. Um, if you guys haven't seen it, it was recently on Ellen. Yep. And uh, she, Kobe Bryant. she right. played Kobe Bryant in that game. And what's funny about it is, um, is one of our great friends was did the voiceover for the game. And until recently, if you guys are, are know Jeff, um, you can shout out to him sometime. He does the um, introduction for the Question and Answer podcast. Okay. So, so uh, he's the voiceover guy who does the introduction for the new Question and Answer podcast with Derek and Rusty. So if you guys so, have heard that, you've heard Jeff. Yes, he's one of our voiceover guys, and uh, we we just good friends, met him before, uh, talked to him sometimes, and he's probably listening, so shout out to Jeff. But here's what's cool. He did the voiceover several years ago. He thought it was for a game for a phone app, and he does this for a living, so he doesn't remember. It. And you know, he got paid and went on. Uh, come to find out, he went to Dave and Buster's with his son, and while they were playing the game, his son said, or his son was playing the game, said, "Dad, that's your voice." And he goes, "Oh, it sure is." He didn't even realize that that was going to be his voice. So now every day when I test my games, I get to hear Jeff talking to me, going, <laughs> "Player one, your turn. Player two, <laughs> you're up." And uh, what you do is you shoot a basketball, and where it lands, it it switches from uh, physical to video and shows a ball going down, and that's you make a connect four. So you're the yellow team, I'm the red team. And we try to connect four in some way. So it's a combination basketball game and connect four. And it's very fun if you guys ever get a chance or see one of those. And if you know Jeff, you'll rec at, now that I hear it, I hear him all the time. And uh, Jeffrey, thank you for all that you do. 
And I think it's so cool. Every day I get to say hi to Jeff, even though he never talks back. He just says, <laughs> you're, you're, hurry up. you know. But um, I hurry up, and I do what Jeff says. But mm-hmm. anyway, I thought that was cool. Yeah. I thought it was so cool we got a game that uh, – and we, we've, we've done this before. We've had several games we own that we either knew the person that wrote the music or did some of the talking, like Steve Ritchie and some of the games and things like that. That made it even cooler for us to own. We got some chat going on. What yeah, are they and let's, so let's go ahead and see here. Um, let's see. Um, there's some permit talk here, Tim. We can talk about that real quick. Okay. Uh, let's see. In the UK, we don't need a permit. And he says, Mr. Silverwall says that here in Ohio, we don't need a permit for games. I have a small game room with no problem. And uh, YouTube awesome. says, if all games are free play, a permit isn't needed, right? It's possible. Um, there is a few loopholes there. Uh, you can... You still gonna have to have a sales tax permit or something, uh, or a general business license. I'm sure. Yeah. Even in Ohio, uh, I assume see. you have to have you a got general a, business. You license. got a uh, you got a lot of games in there. Or you, you you not got old games in there? No, there are no old games in there, are there? Right no, now. There's a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle modern version, but right. not not any classics. No. Okay. There you go. Okay, so let us, um, I think that about does it there, Tim. But um, I noticed Mr. Silverball asked a question when we came in. He okay. says, I have a monitor and a Star Trek Voyager. They have, um, let's see, they have the high voltage turned up so it can read the guns. Would a cap kit fix it or a flyback, uh, or flyback be toast? So they have high voltage turned up so it can read the guns. Would a flyback fix it? Well, a- or... If 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 um it, you're, I guess he's saying he can't get it bright enough for the gun yeah. to properly. It, it would there. it could help, but doing a cap kit may help more than a flyback. Yeah, depending to get the brightness up or the contrast up enough. Yeah. But yeah, it wouldn't hurt to rebuild it all. But yeah. it could be your guns. Yeah, it could be. And but we have a video on that. But, yeah, it, it, tube rejuvenation might be good. But, but yeah, it could be the guns. To turn it up probably tells me that yes, it, tube rejuvenation might help as much. as well, I was as gonna anything. say on the guns though, make sure the lenses are clean. Yeah. Make sure the optical sensors are clean. Make sure all that stuff's working properly. And like you said, we have a video on that because sometimes it's like your brightness is okay, but and there's calibration settings like in Police Trainer, for instance, Tim. There are calibration settings that allow you to change the brightness in the game. Yes. Uh, so you, I don't know about Voyager if it has those, but there may be calibration settings within Voyager itself that you can go in and change the brightness if you need to as well. So, okay. He also says, we have a Gaddy's Pizza here in Port, uh, Portsmouth, uh, Ohio. When we do a service call uh, for roof repair in that area, we eat there. So there you okay. go. So he actually eats that, uh, eats it there. And he says, what's your favorite pizza? This is YouTube Punk asking. Same well, question for two. It's Tim. that. It's got to be Gaddy's Pizza, right? No, something something um, you were talking about in our Arcade Repair Tips staff chat. Is that a good way to say it? Okay, yes. um, It was that um, you have to-go orders. Yes. Which is something you never had at Chuck E. Cheese. No, we didn't take to-go orders. Because <laughs> nobody wanted to-go Nobody to-go wanted it, Chuck yeah. E. Cheese, right? They just wanted the to-go. That's right. Exactly. <laughs> so. they wanted, once their kids got done playing, they wanted to-go. I think I it says something about the pizza, though, the fact that you have to-go orders yes. for a place that People has... People are calling online orders and want to come pick them up. We don't do delivery... Uh, although some Mr. Gaddies do, and they stay pretty busy, but people can use Waiter or some uh, something DoorDash. like that, DoorDash or something like that. Okay. Um, is Mr. Gaddies per gameplay or time card? It's a card. It's per, pl- That's per play. And I can, uh, for instance, we had a party. I did turn it on time. I can change those settings really quick. In a, and for an hour, I can make everything free play, or I can make all certain games free play, or I can make them so much time for so much money. Or it, the one thing I like about our system, it gives me a lot of control over that without having to call in and say, now, knowing how to do it, I don't know exactly how to do everything yet, but I have the uh, administrative rights and the capabilities to do stuff like that. There you go. Uh, All of so, our games or tickets are on the cards. Mr. Silverball Mania says it was a free game. This is a big cabinet. So I mean, we're thinking what a twenty-five or twenty-seven inch in this Star Trek Voyager. I'm oh not yeah, sure. But um, you're thinking cap kit and flyback replacement may help, but also needs to check the guns on that, right? Yeah, and you need to uh, re- rejuvenate the tube. Will work wonders, maybe. Yeah, depending on what the problem is. Right now, uh, uh, cap kits I a would, lot of times I help would with brightness. definitely start with the cap kit first right. and cheapest thing first. Absolutely. So sounds good. Let's see. Um, Michael says, sometimes when I turn on a game on the monitor, it's blank, but switching it on and off, it's fine. Power supply or cap kit? So sometimes well, I turn on monitor, it could be the filters, filter cap for sure. 
Uh, but check your power supply when you're not getting picture, and that'll tell you if it's the power supply or not. Right. Another thing is that, Tim, it's hard sometimes to narrow those down to but a monitor that, or board issue. But, well. when it's, but when you're able to turn it on and off, it's like the... B plus voltage or something is not always We're having firing. high voltage issues. Yeah, right, correct. So, Which it could be a power supply. It could be coming from the isolation transformer. Mm-hmm. It could be like an If your power supply is still good and you're not getting anything on the screen, then it's probably in your monitor. There you go. Uh, let's see what else. Oh, checking a monitor too. Bluey uh, mm-hmm. actually threw it over there. That's good. Um, let's see. All pizzas but no dominoes. He says. Um, oh, okay. There you go. Um, that's what Mr. Silverball Mania says for his favorite pizza. Okay. All pizzas, no dominoes. Okay. <laughs> you know, Domino's is okay. It's okay. It, Little you, Caesars is okay. Y- yeah, you know what is the neat thing, John, when you learn... I would always ask people, if you really want to know, ask them how they make their pizza. Where's it? If it comes in frozen, it's going to taste like a frozen pizza. Sure. <laughs> if they actually, you know, do like we do and mix the dough and bun it, run it through a sheeter, let it rise... That's pizza making. Right. You know, if, and maybe even if they hand roll it out, that's pizza making. If they're tossing well, it. I was about to say, now, Chucky used frozen dough, right? They use, uh, no, they it's make fresh? their own dough, but it's but they don't always use it that day. Gotcha. They say they do dough daily. They might make it, but they don't necessarily So does eat it get it. frozen or refrigerated? It or? gets refrigerated, and that makes the dough, doesn't get a chance to proof Chucky's pizza can be great if it's eat, done just right at the right time. Right. The problem is they're so busy, it's hard to time that out. Mr. Gaddy's is all good. Doesn't matter what time you come in. Doesn't matter if you come in late in the day or early in the morning, it's going to taste the same. Damn. That's because more goes into making the dough right. Then everything else kind of falls in place. And we use smoked provolone cheese, a lot better sauce and all right. that. Uh, absolutely. It's definitely better pizza. So there you go. Okay. So but if they, if a lot of people just get the dough in and run it, press it, and they just make it, make it right out of there. It's cold. Right. And that's um, just like. Can you imagine eating cold biscuits? Right. That's what it involves down to. Or and, and there's, I like frozen biscuits. Okay. Sure. The kind that pop and scare you. But if you're gonna pay for a, a restaurant but, pizza. You know what I'm saying? Don't you right. want the good stuff? Right. But go to grandma's and let her get her hands in the dough and make you some biscuits. Tell me which one's better, you sure. know? So um, a good example would be your grandma's biscuits versus the Fresh are always better. That's from Paul. Pop on the counter. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> so there you go. You know, that scares me half to death. Yes, it does. I, <laughs> like, like, Deirdre, like, Deirdre can do that, but she doesn't like Jack in the Boxes. I'm like, Jack in the Boxes... I know when they're going to pop. Right. Yeah, I don't know when this can of biscuits no. is going to pop. I have no You're idea. peeling that thing off just knowing it's coming. It's like That's a right. jack-in-the-box. So, like... you know, I do, I just, what I do is I pop it against the edge of the counter. Yeah. Pop, and then it just does it. Anyway, way off topic. You see, hey, life tips here, right. Tim. How to get, how to open a thing of biscuits without freaking ask out. Ask them how they make their dough. Ask their uh, people, people. That'll tell you what kind of pizza it is. There you go. Well, Tim, I think we're caught up on the live chat. We'll continue to leave it there. We have two news stories to cover, and then we will move on to the after show. Tim, the first one here is from then, or is about Nintendo. Yeah. Nintendo wins twelve million dollar lawsuit from trademark and copyright infringement. Um, and there's a link there to Nintendo Life. It's always it's also below in the um, in the uh, comment section, not the comment section, Tim, but the description for the video. Right. Earlier this year in July, Nintendo filed a lawsuit against two ROM and emulator websites in a federal court for trademark and copyright infringement. The latest development is the owners and operators of these now defunct websites, a married couple, have agreed to a sum exceeding $12 million in favor of Nintendo. Now, Tim, the article does say that they may have settled for less. Right. But that was the number that Nintendo wanted out there. Right. Of course they want that out there. Because right. That's a lot of money, they right? They might have settled for 12 bucks. Exactly. But... but they want everybody to think that it was $12 million bucks. Right. So that's the difference. But um, obviously, Tim, I think with these kind of lawsuits coming through, we're going to see a decrease in ROMs and emulators sites because yes. people are worried about or 12 million selling, lawsuits. Or people selling main machines right. in, on a public place. Right. And, and Nintendo has started to really dig into that back catalog with things like the NES Classic, the Super NES Classic, and now the new Switch Online service, which right. allows you to play Nintendo games. And so they're really wanting to monetize that. And now, since I think they're trying to monetize those things, this is when they're going after them. People are wondering why now. I think the answer is because they're finally starting to monetize that library, which they didn't do before. But everybody who's ever built an emulator or dealt with emulators, we've we've been seeing this coming for years. In fact, I'm kind of shocked it's taken this long. Yes. You know, because we've been, uh, you know, playing games or seeing main machines for years. Exactly. 
But now, uh, and I can't entirely blame them, but at the same time, it, if you're not going to, it, the games are reproducing, I understand. But, you know, our point has always been, well, then reproduce them all. Right. If you're going to, if to protect them all, then you need to have some some way for us to play them. We just want to play them. Exactly. So, you know, we don't mind this, uh, the methods that they have now to play them, but there's a lot of games that are on there that we want to play. That's true. So are you going to continually re- release these? I don't know what their plans are. I'm sure most of us, it's kind of sad. And uh, for a married couple to have to come up with $12 million, whatever the settlement was, Makes me wonder, well, you know, were they actually making money off of these? That much money? Maybe from advertising, but it couldn't have been much. I wouldn't, I wouldn't have thought so either. Yeah, so I'm with you. So it probably wasn't a lot. Definitely wasn't near $12 million, I No. Think. So, I mean, I think that's that was a, just a figure. But anyway, what do you guys think? I, I... Somebody says, what a ripoff. Nintendo is just out for the money. That was from Paul, and Louis well, says, Paul, well, yeah, but they are well, yeah, a company trying to turn big. it. <laughs> exactly. They want to turn profit. If they don't make money, it's kind of like I tell people that, um, you know, well, this is high. Your games are high. Well, we have to make money. That's exactly. how we stay in business. Right. But, it's got to be profit. Yeah, I, I get them protecting their rights. I just, mm-hmm. you know, I wish they would do that to where, and here goes the phone. Let's see. Oh, there you go. I need to get this. So. Okay. We'll <laughs> see you. right back. Bye, Tim. So, yeah, I think Hello. what it comes down to, guys, is that you really, I mean, that, they have to make profit, and so they're going after it. Now they're starting to monetize that back catalog. I think uh, we're yes. seeing that a whole lot it's more. So um, Nintendo will continue to go after these sites probably as long as they decide to monetize this uh, stuff. So uh, Let's see here. Oh, somebody says, uh, have fun, time for bed, 4 a, 4.30 a.m. rolls around early. That is early, Mr. Silverball Mania, so please go to bed. Get some sleep. This will be on the recording after the fact so you can watch the rest of it. So thanks for joining us tonight, though. Um, let's see what else we have here. Yeah, um, we've all talked about this a couple years back, and like Louis said, we have talked about this about how uh, Nintendo was not going after people, and now they are. But I think it really comes down to the fact that, like I said, they're starting to monetize this stuff, and it's making a big difference. So, okay, anybody else? Um, YouTube Punk favorite pizza at Mr. Gaddy's. I will ask Tim as soon as he gets back. He's on the phone right now with one of the people who's up there. So um, we'll come back and do that. Um, someone didn't scratch someone's back. And ne- got mad, and that may have been. I don't know if that was part of it with this Nintendo thing, Mr. Silverball, but uh, Mania. But I do think that Nintendo is trying to turn a profit, like Louis said, and they really do want to obviously monetize that back catalog as much as possible if that's through the NES Classic, Super NES Classic, Switch Online service, whatever it is. They want to monetize that stuff, and they do own the copyrights for it, so you can't really fault them for that. They want to make money, so. Okay, I'm going to go ahead yeah, and move we on while Tim is over there, and we'll get his thoughts on this and y'all thoughts in the chat room. And the next article here is from about Toys R Us. Basically, their revival plan is revealed. Jeffrey the Giraffe will pop up at grocery stores. This is from NewJersey.com, guys. And Jeffrey's toy box displays will uh, appear in 600 Kroger family of stores, a chain of grocery and department stores across the country. The boxes will feature 35 toys priced from $19.99 to $49.99, including exclusives from brands such as Animal Zone, Imaginarium, uh, Journey Girls, EduScience, You and Me, and Just Like Home. And so, guys, as you can see, there, you know, the credit or the debtors that own Toys R Us now are trying really hard to monetize uh, the brand. They're trying to get some money out of it. I don't know if this is really the best way to handle it because obviously it's kind of a, a shell of what it once was. Not having actual Toys R Us stores I think is a big loss. And uh, in lieu of that, it seems like we're seeing toys pop up everywhere. I was in Barnes & Noble just the other day and a quarter of the store now is dedicated to toys alone, which is crazy. Uh, Best Buy is starting to sell more toys but um, these Jeff, I mean I think this is just another way that places are selling toys. You got Kroger getting in on the deal, but they're getting in with this uh, newly founded Jeffrey's Toy Box Toys R Us company. So, uh, Tim, we were just talking about Toys R Us. Are yeah. you back? You got to leave us like right now. I'm, or you no, I got to. I don't. I'm gonna have to cut it a little short, but I can stick around for a little bit. Okay, so there you go. So, Tim, uh, what do you think about the Toys R Us survival plans, putting these Jeffrey Toy Box kiosks in like Kroger stores and stuff? Yeah, I don't know. I just don't. It's not Toys R Us. I mean. Yeah. Yeah, I get they're using Jeffrey and all that stuff, but um, it's not um, going and picking out a toy and playing with the toys that are there and the experience that you get from a real toy store. Exactly. We can buy those toys online. Well, like I was just saying, though, Tim, um, I don't know if you've been to Barnes & Noble recently, but like a quarter of that store now is toys. 
I did half not, of it is books I half, and another quarter of it's coffee shop. Wow. So, I mean, that's what it is now. You need to go in there sometime and see. So, I think we're seeing toys pop up at Best Buys and Barnes and Nobles and all these other places. Yeah, and because so of the fact you they, can't go they're to filling the gap. Yeah. Exactly. So, I, I do think that that's a big deal. So, if you guys have any, any thoughts about that, um, so my, uh, Louis says they will have to be online only. That may be a good way for Toys R Us to go going forward. But overall, it's a pale imitation of the Toys R Us we once knew, right? Yes. Well, Tim, I think that about finishes us up for the live show. I'm going to go ahead and wrap it up here with some of the final little things. Oh, that's blank. We want your arcade-related videos. So just a reminder, Tim, we want some, if you want some free advertising for your YouTube channel, we are looking for people to submit short videos, 10 minutes or less, about arcade-related topics. Please send a link to your video to questions at arcaderepairtips.com. Again, that's questions at arcaderepairtips.com. And our staff will review it. If we like it, we'll use it during one of our live show episodes. Make sure to put a plug-in for your channel so people will know where to find you. And we look forward to your submissions. And we haven't got any of those in a while, Tim, but we always want to remind people that that's always an option for you guys if you'd like some free advertising for your arcade-related videos. Even if you don't have a channel specifically dedicated to that, we will definitely um, we'll definitely um, at least show your video if it's arcade-related. And then, guys, we have our contact information. We have our general email at questions at arcaderepairtips.com. Questions at arcaderepairtips.com. Uh, if you put live show in the subject, you get it mentioned on the show. And then, guys, we have our YouTube page at youtube.arcaderepairtips.com. And, uh, again, comments from our last live show will be covered in the next episode, just like the one at the beginning of the show today. And we do want to remind you guys of podcast at arcaderepairtips.com. That goes to our friends Eric and Rusty, the new host of the Question and Answer podcast. And so uh, if you guys want to contact Eric and Rusty, you can do it via podcast at arcaderepairtips.com. And make sure you also subscribe on their iTunes page at itunes.arcaderepairtips.com and their Stitcher radio page at stitcher.arcaderepairtips.com. We also want to thank... Um, we also want to thank them for all of that they do. Hopefully, they'll be putting out a new episode very soon. And then, guys, we have our social media pages at facebook.arcaderepairtips.com and twitter.arcaderepairtips.com. And we want to thank Louie, who's in the chat tonight, as well as Mark, for all of the great information that they post on both of those sites. Uh, great stuff, guys. If you're not on those sites, you're missing out on a lot of great information. Again, facebook.arcaderepairtips.com and twitter.arcaderepairtips.com. Tim, we're back. And that about does it for the regular show. So uh, are we going to have an after show? We're a very short one. Okay, very <laughs> short one. I have a lot of topics, goodness. Yeah. Um, but at, at this point, guys, of course, the after show is for non-arcade related topics. If you're getting off here, we want to thank all of you guys for joining us tonight and for sticking with us through the live show. Hopefully you had a good time. We enjoyed having all you guys in the live chat with us. If you want to stick around for the after show, apparently a very short one, yeah. uh, then you can. And uh, we'll be talking about uh, maybe the a lot of football and then maybe some holiday talk as well. So, Tim, anything you want to say before we sign off for the arcade related uh, part of the the show here just thanks everybody for your encouragement i know you've kind of walked this journey with me a little bit um thank you everybody's been very encouraging thank you guys who donated tonight we put that money Absolutely. to good use a lot of that goes right back into making other shows and yep. videos and stuff like that so um thank you very much Absolutely. So, guys, we just want to thank you guys for watching tonight. And remember, here at Arcade Repair Tips, when you fix the game, we you play, play the, the game. game. Take care, everybody, and we'll see you in the after show. What he needs, Mike. Thank you for watching this episode of the Arcade Repair Tips live show. All of our past episodes are available on our website at ArcadeRepairTips.com or on our YouTube page. This show is intended for entertainment and educational purposes only. Please consult a professional before attempting to repair any coin-operated machines yourself. The preceding program is a Varcade Entertainment production.
Hmm. Sorry, guys. Sorry, guys. Forgot to turn on the mic, Tim. Okay. We're back. Well, I can tell you how our investment's doing now. Okay, so uh, obviously the first thing we cover here, guys, is Tim's investment talk. So $10, Tim. How's our $10 doing? It's uh, actually up right now. It, oh. it started climbing. You know, cannabis became legal in uh, Canada, and it got a bump from that, and then it kind of drained back down again. Now it's headed on the back up. We're about up, I would say, 10 20 about 30%. Gotcha. So okay. Not a bad investment, especially with the stock market as a whole is kind of down right now. Absolutely. So, yeah, you see, we that's what we get. We, we had the mic on mute. Sorry, guys. I, I brought the screen. We're just the talking. The that's right. We're just the lip readers away. out there got us. That's right. That's right. So uh, um, the only thing we talked about was that, though, though, Tim, was the yeah, investment. So. Well, and I said that it wasn't a big emergency like the store's not on fire or nothing. They just can't find some papers, and I'm going to have to run by there and show them where they are because I tried to explain it, but they still didn't understand. No okay. big deal. So you've got a little time for an aftershock. Yeah. That's what it means. So we're here. We heard about your investment. Tim, college football talk. So did you get a chance to watch the Big 12 game at all? I only got to Texas? see the highlights because, of course, I was at work. But you saw it. A lot of complaints about the officiating. Did you Did you feel – Don't care. Did you feel like Oklahoma beat Texas or that you got beat by the refs? No, I, no, I no. Know. I feel like Oklahoma beat Texas because it really came down to that fumble. Okay. Um, I think it, without the fumble there at the end – or the, no, 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 the safety. Okay. It, without the safety there at the end because you guys fumbled, we were covered. Uh-huh. At the end of the game, and uh-huh. then you guys scored a safety on us and got the ball back. And if we would have had the ball, I think we could have marched downfield, made the score, maybe made it competitive, at least go to overtime. But um, I didn't feel. I felt like we screwed it up. But I felt like the winner got was going to get messed, kind of screwed anyway. Yeah. Because I knew the winner would. Well, Texas would have won. I don't know. If they would have dropped and they went in the top four. No, they went. But I knew if Oklahoma won, what is better? Here's a good discussion topic. Was it better for Oklahoma to win and have to play Alabama or get to play Alabama? Yeah, I think so. Or you lose and you get to play an LSU or somebody no. else. Or, you want to be in that playoff. Right, you want to be in the playoff. I mean, isn't that the whole point? Well, you win. You're an OU fan, you tell me. Well, I, <laughs> I, I agree. Playoff. I would rather be in the playoffs, but there's something to – I don't know if anybody can beat Alabama and Oklahoma's defense cannot stop anybody. Right. So – When they look at Alabama's, they look want, at Georgia. Any other team, I would have thought they would beat. I think they could beat any other non anybody top six and down. I think Oklahoma's favored. They win the game. You got to play the toughest team by winning that game. You actually guarantee that you're going to play the the number one team. Now, if you upset them, that does definitely give you the momentum. And I do think if anybody could beat them. Or pull off the upset, I would definitely wouldn't be overconfident if I was Alabama. Right. Oklahoma's got a great team, which is not really good on defense. So right. I would have part of me says if they would have lost, I would have said, Well, that's okay. We're going to the Cotton Bowl and we'll probably beat whoever we play. I'm glad we won because you always as a Sooner fan, you would always want to beat Texas any day of the week, <laughs> every day, all day long. You don't want to lose to Texas, just like they didn't want to lose to us. A uh, great rivalry. But at the same time, it also threw us into, oh, now we got to play Alabama. I knew. I was like, we're going to play Alabama. We're going to be the four seed, playing the number one seed. But some good games are still to happen. And I guess so. You always want a chance for that national That's championship. Our, I think I think you guys have a and great chance. And to finish chance. the season in the top four team, you, you, know, you can't complain about that. A lot of teams would love to be in that position to get a chance to play Alabama. So that's how it works out. And I really, though, I mean, I'm a big a, a proponent of the eight team because there's still some teams. Uh, Ohio State didn't yep. make it. I, I I think they deserve it just as much as Oklahoma. Uh, there's some teams. UCF yep. is undefeated. See, if you include an eight-team playoff, after that, I don't think Texas deserves to be in the playoffs. No. But they deserve a bowl game, and right. they deserve a good bowl game, and I think they could win their bowl game. Uh, do you know who they're playing yet? I have no idea. I haven't I, heard I think yet. they posted it, but I don't remember. Yeah, I haven't, haven't actually. I've been so busy at work, I haven't heard much of anything. But I'm a big fan of the eight-team playoff. Me too. It's just that top four, that one and two are always easy, but three, four, five, six, seven at the end of the year – one loss teams, or you know, has Notre Dame really been tested? I would love to. I would love to see Notre Dame and play in Alabama or something, or or have them play one more game before that. Agreed. 
But um, that'll be some good. There's some good games coming. Absolutely. Um, so let's go on to NFL football talk. And somebody says, um, "Close I get to football is NFL blitz." I totally understand. Uh-huh. I used to be like that, but um, now I like football. I mean, I just get into it, you know. Um, but um, I went to the Dallas Cowboys uh, New Orleans yeah, Saints you game. Did. I was there, and um, I expected it to be like forty-three to twenty-seven right. Saints, and. I thought, I- and I we thought, put a hurt on them. Our defense shut down the Saints. It was beautiful. And I thought the Saints were pretty much unstoppable, at least offensively. Like I thought, yeah, you're going to beat the Saints. You're going to have to outshoot them. Kind of yeah. like they're kind of the Oklahoma of the of, of the, the national field, and that's the truth. And that's what they're saying is that uh, well, them and the Chiefs and the Rams. That's how they win. Yep. And maybe that's the new style. Mm-hmm. Is you know you say defense wins championships. Kansas City. Yeah, 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 like that too. Exactly. And so, you know, it's like, what do you do now? Is it, you go to this style, but all of a sudden the defense shows up, and wow. Then all of a sudden, uh, to be honest, the Cowboys, I think, are a, a, a medium team. They're not a great team right now. Defense is great. But the, that is keeping helping them win games. Their mm-hmm. offense still has a way to go. Uh, play calling to me is, is suspect. But if you know better this game, better in that game, better in that game. Yeah. So I mean, it was a fantastic game to be at. I did not have a voice the next day. I, I actually, <laughs> I never lose my voice, but it drops uh, about like three octaves. When right. I was, like down here. Yeah. Goes, like the entire day because I was yelling and screaming so much on that fourth down that New right. Orleans went on. I was like right there at the corner. We were just yelling. Oh and my then, gosh. I mean, so I mean, it was so much fun. We had a good time. But, and for uh, the the people that live in Ohio and Florida, they've never been to, to the Dallas Cowboys Stadium. Uh, tell them about that. Tell it's them what's, big. it's huge. Yeah, it's so 100,000 cool. people, big. Yeah. Um, it's a great experience. We had a great time. Um, if you're not a Cowboys fan, it's, when, it's when they're playing the your team, you should come to the Cowboys game at that stadium. Everybody needs to go. I think Arizona has a great stadium like that. The Saints, even the Superdome. But yeah. at the same Superdome's time. Superdome's pretty old, though. Yeah. I think there's nothing like Cowboys Stadium is really AT&T awesome. AT&T now. Yeah, AT&T, AT&T Stadium. Stadium. But it's very cool if you've never been. Uh, it's it's a great place to go. So, All right. um, But it was fun. How's your fancy team doing? We're going through this real fast. Huh? I lost last week. Are you in the playoffs? Because you're probably I'm in the playoffs. Now. I was the number one wow. team. We got two brackets, and I was the number one team in the South. And I have I lost last week bad. It's like everybody I had just just didn't play, Late and I should have. I wasn't even playing somebody. I should have beat them easily. My whole team, the bench, did people got hurt. It was just like one of those weeks. I'm like, well, I think I am now nine and four. Down. I missed the playoffs by one win. If I would have uh, had one more win, I would have made it in. Um, but we're having the playoffs this week. I'm definitely and in the I'm playoffs. In. So there you go. Okay, now, Tim, now this this topic's real interesting to me because I don't know if you saw the announcement or not. But, yes, uh, I did. I actually liked the XFL the first time around. I loved it. I thought it was cool. He hate me. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, I, I just thought it was a neat concept. I liked, yeah. some, I liked that it was more rough and tumble football. Yeah, kind of like a things. mixture of rugby and football or something. Right, like, exactly. No um, fair catches. So like they announced all the teams, and it turns out that Arlington yeah. and Houston are both getting XFL teams yeah. of the eight teams. Right. And so in Arlington, they're going to play in Globe Life Park. That's where our Texas Ranger baseball team plays right, right now. But they're getting a new field in 2020, which oh. is when the XFL starts. Okay. And so basically, mm-hmm. the Texas Rangers Major League Baseball Club is going yeah. to vacate Globe Life Park. That's going to be interesting. They're going to move to Globe Life Field. Which wow. is across the street, and the XFL is going to have their games in Globe Life Park, which is the current baseball park. I went to the opening game of Globe Life Park. Uh, the field doesn't seem that old to me. It's 1994. Yeah. So I mean, I that's, was there. Yeah, 1994. Well, I'm sorry, the Red Sox. 1994 is 24 years ago. Wow. I'm old. <laughs> right. Doesn't feel that old to me, you know. But it's like, yeah, it's an old park. But, but it's still going to be around. It's going to be utilized for XFL. Um, but I think it's interesting that they're playing in a baseball park, and it turns out that. Um, Maybe more football will be played there because UT, um, the high school, Arlington. I'm sure they'll re- may play remodel there. it and, and then look um, different. Right, UT, Arlington may also have games there. Wow. So, so I mean, I'm glad to see the old parks getting some use. Right, but I think it's interesting that the XFL is going. And uh, Louis says, how about them boys? How yeah. about them boys? So there you go. Uh, those Saints just ain't, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, right. <laughs> So, um, but you know, uh, I think XFL is really interesting. Topic of discussion: like Cowboys have all been known as America's team. Always had more fans. They said the second most popular team is now the New Orleans Saints, wow. and getting close to overtaking this becoming America's team. A lot of people like the Saints. They're good. They they're good and, right now. 
And they, and they, I think they're just um, they're exciting to watch. Yeah, I root for them when they're not playing the Cowboys. Somebody sometimes. said, "Dig the Santa cap, my Yoda Santa cap." Okay. Here. Yeah, I'm glad. Like, in my Yoda holiday shirt, we got we got a, a theme going on. But uh-huh. anyway, uh, I think you're right. I thought, and you see, you know, Tim, one of the things that we noticed when we went to the game was that there were a ton of Saints, Saints fans. fans. Golly, probably right, right where you're sitting. Yep, that's like where two we row, sat like last two seats time. Down. Yeah. Well, that's the thing, though. You couldn't not sit there yeah. and be next to one. There were so I'm many. I'm just so glad to not hear hoot at for a whole week. So that, oh, golly. <laughs> that whole time. That's, that's oh, man, annoying. you should see how they, somebody had, like, a framed um, Drew Brees jersey that said, like, you know, um, leading passing, you know, yeah. number one leading passer, right? Okay. Isn't that what his record is? Like, number one leading passer right. of all time, right? Right. So they had this so, jersey and set it on it, and every time they'd hold up, those Saints fans, you should see them. So man, is Drew out. Brees the GOAT? You know, he may be pretty, he's pretty good. Statistically. But he doesn't have as many uh, championships as Tom Brady. You can't beat the championships. That rings saying. trump everything to me. Right. I don't care. Joe, Joe Montana, is, is, in my opinion, is better because of the rings. You, it's one thing to have a lot of stats. Another thing to have the rings. There you go. I lost okay, it. football talk done. Okay. What did you do for Thanksgiving? Because, you know, we had Thanksgiving between the show I had and show. one day off okay. because we were busy. And we were. I hired people and did interviews on Friday afterwards. I took off to Louisiana and saw my sisters, which for one day, and was very glad I did that. It was very awesome. Had a good time. Well, my dad's side of the family came into their place. So, But actually, my little baby son, who's not even a year old, mm-hmm. got sick. Uh-huh. So I ended up taking my daughter, Olivia, to my parents, and then Deirdre took her to her parents. Uh-huh. And so usually we'd all go as a family, but since one of us had to be home with Alex the whole time. Um, Welcome we to parenting. That. Exactly. So, on the spur. In fact, you know. Always is the worst time. In fact, what I do right before we went on with the live show, yeah. I gave my daughter, she's running a fever, I gave her yep. some medicine. Right. <laughs> so that's part of being a parent, part of being a dad or whatever and i mean it is what you do so but yeah you know so, when they get older and annoying and you know, cough you go like here's some rubber tussin that's, that's right just take it yeah. that's yeah. right take this mess and they're out for all, all night you don't have no, to you don't have to force well, do you don't have to force the you see now if i want to give them to take medicine it's a oh yeah, yeah you know, it's a chore so anyway okay so christmas is coming up yes you got your shopping done yet i do not hardly i have you know it's like I've been so focused on getting the restaurant open. I woke up the other day. I'm like, oh my gosh, Christmas is this is December. Wait a second, you know. Days. So I've days. done very little shopping. I've done a little planning. I know what I kind of what I want to get and a few items and stuff. Um, but other than that, I've just been so store focused and I, and having one day off a week is all I'm having. Uh, my next day off, I really got to get after some shopping or. So let me ask you something. Looking. So, you know, obviously we're talking about George W. Bush and, you know, he passed, or George H. W. Bush, excuse yes. me, and that he recently passed. And he was part of that greatest generation, World War II vets. My my stepfather-in-law is also, he's 96. Right. So, and he was also, he also served in World War II. But trying to buy gifts for him is very difficult. Oh, I bet. Because, I mean, it's he... like, yeah, what do you buy somebody? He that... buys what he wants and, you know, it's like he doesn't need anything. Right. And so I'm trying to figure out gifts for, for him. Yeah. If anybody has any ideas, I'm going to pitch it to the live chat. If anybody right. has any ideas, I'm open to ideas. I'm trying to think of stuff. Now, la- here's the deal, though. He had um, he has a Game Boy that one of his other grandkids left him that he plays all the time with Tetris. Oh, wow. So you know what I did last year? I bought him an upgraded version that had a brighter backlight, bigger screen. He okay. loves that thing. Plays it all the time. Wow. So last year, I hit a home run with a Game Boy. Right. You know, gaming-related and everything. But well, this you know, year, I have no idea. You know, he likes Tetris. He maybe really he would like Tetris. a Tetris shirt or something to go with since he likes it so much. I don't, uh, know. I don't know. Maybe a shirt. Uh, he likes to golf, but anytime I give him golf stuff, he just doesn't go for it. So I don't know. I'm trying to. I'm racking my brain here. Okay. Well, we'll we'll all be helping you think of that one. There you go. Um. So and then what do you got? So no, you're still working on the gifts. Yeah, the kids are the older kids are easy. They just want money. Sure. And because they and they pull it together and get something they really want or yeah. something we couldn't afford. So sure. it's like they want money. But I'll get them something. Money from you, the grandparents, right. other parents. And my wife is not like, I think she, Deirdre's probably this way too. Um, you know, some wives, you get them a kitchen appliance or a vacuum cleaner or something, they would be just disowning you. She likes that stuff. Right. So there's a couple hints she's thrown out about, you know, I wouldn't mind one of these or wouldn't mind one of that. Uh, so there's a couple items there I can be pretty, pretty safe. I know if I can well, get those. That's more my mom. Now, Deirdre, uh, she does. She kind of does her own shopping. So, yeah. uh, so she likes. Um, there's certain brands that she likes uh, right. that she. So like whenever they, they have a big sale, usually in the summertime. No, so, so I tell her. I tell her. You know, here's 200, 300 bucks. Right. Get what, get you, what want. you want. Yeah. And then I'll wrap it up. And so um, that's what. You and we happens. both know that this is a crazy year for. She started a new teaching grade. I started this new job. Right. We both realize. 
we're not going to have a lot of time. So just having a day off is going to be our Christmas. Maybe I was talking to your buddy uh, Charles. You know, they go to our church. And yeah. I was like, hey, have you talked to him in a while? He's like, nope. Yeah. <laughs> no. Nope. I, I was like, yeah, that's about how he's been with me too. I was yeah. like, I know you've been busy. So it is, and 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 every extra minute, I I got off work at eight thirty the other night, and we went to a movie. And got up at seven the next morning, oh, like but it's it. like you having a fit. We went and saw the Christmas story though. Oh, it was good uh, at the Liberty. Oh, nice. And the the original Christmas story, you know, you'll shoot your eye out with a BB right, gun. Right. And I don't think Don had ever watched the whole thing. Really? So, or TBS, she had. That's what I said. Man. TBS. All I think she's seen the, all the clips, but it's like she never just sat and watched the movie. And I didn't see it in the theater. Right. So that was kind of different. Um, Great movie. And we had a good time, but yeah, I can just see us really. I'll be off. Christmas Eve night and Christmas Day. So just getting to spend some quality time together. And the older you get, you realize if there's something you really want, you get it. But you're like me. I like to put a lot of thoughts in my gifts. I like to get something that, you know, you want that wow factor when somebody, exactly. oh, wow, you found this. You how you know, and so I like to be a little thoughtful. So so um, got YouTube bugs said shot glasses, which I didn't. I don't think he would go for the shot glasses, but he does like alcohol. So maybe a nice bottle of something. I don't know what he drinks. I'll oh, maybe. So maybe a good one um but uh, i you know i don't think he does many shots at his age you know what i'm saying i mean right. you know i mean but i know there is alcohol that he likes to drink so maybe hey, maybe thing. you can never go wrong with a like especially if he's a wine drinker or something a good bottle of wine or yeah. something i think about that okay so tim uh real quick here let's talk about movies and tv shows you saw christmas story yes just mentioned that which is great and that was kind of fun to watch it in the theater and i think that that's kind of like one of those movies you just got to watch once every yeah. christmas oh yeah What's, what's your favorite Christmas movie? <sighs> Golly. Uh, Elf is big in our house. Oh, I like Christmas so, Vacation. Uh, Christmas Vacation is yeah. big in our house. Um, <laughs> you like the funny Christmas. Right. So, lighthearted ones. Uh, Elf is good because you can watch it with the kids. You can't watch Christmas Vacation with the kids. Unless uh, it's on TV. Yeah. It's um, but it, yeah, you, can't, you can't watch the original uh, with <laughs> right? the kids. You just can't. You Elf is hilarious. Grow. Elf is great because you can't watch it with the kids. Um, Muppet Christmas Carol. Okay. Big time for us. We love that one. Michael Caine does an absolutely fantastic job in that movie. Um, let's see what else. Um, anything else? What about you, Tim? You got any others? I like Jingle All the Way with Arnold Schwarzenegger. Jingle Schwarzen- All the Way is a good one. Arnold Schwarzenegger. AMC that's funny. this year has like a lot of them. I don't know if you noticed that. Like if you're watching AMC, yeah, I'll tell you what I don't ones. really like, and and my wife can get on that kick. You know, every one of those uh, Hallmark ones. Oh my gosh! They and they all have, if if they would just mix it up, it's always the same thing. This person has been gone. It's the same. And plot. they went through a divorce, and they come back home for the holidays, and they meet this guy that they used to know in high school, and now he's not a nerd, and he's all good looking, and you know, it's like. But then there's this other guy who's really a jerk. Yeah. And she doesn't know whether to pick the jerk or pick the nice guy. Right. But then in the end, she ends up picking the nice guy and right. something really bad happens to the jerk. And that's the end of the movie. Yeah. And then it repeat. Yeah. And then it's a whole new character <laughs> and they just play the same, same thing. Same thing, right? I don't know if you guys noticed that or not. Anyway, it's like every Hallmark Christmas. It's like, come on. Um, but, but that's you know, the thing. You can turn it on anytime. But I will tell happening. you something that we, we laughed about. I have never watched the whole thing. I've never watched It's a Wonderful Life. Really? I've never watched the whole thing. Fantastic. Now, I have seen a lot of it, and I know the ending, and I know the plot, and I know the theme. I don't know that I've ever been able to sit down and watch the whole movie through and through, so maybe that'll be my goal right. this Christmas. But, you know, we're, we're leaving out a key one that's probably my favorite of all time. Die I know you're Die Hard. Yeah. <laughs> that's right. that's and we almost had a discussion <laughs> <That's right. laughs> about, is Die Hard a Christmas movie? Yes, of course <laughs> yes, it is. It is, a, it is a we could not have, we couldn't do, <laughs> we couldn't, right. neither one of us wanted to disagree it wasn't. <laughs> that's right. So, uh, you classic know, Christmas I, I, movie. Uh, somebody said Christmas it's the cranks that one's a good yes. one yes um the santa claus all santa three claus of them. are funny um family man which you may not have in your repertoire that had um a nicholas cage in it and yes. taylor leone is also a christmas movie very good actually the first movie i took my wife to wow so um well that's cool yeah so the family man's a big one for us and nicholas cage actually plays a pretty decent character it also has a jeremy um oh, what's his name piven Cher- jeremy piven in it um which has recently gotten into a lot of trouble for other things but um uh, but yeah, it's a good movie. I like the Family Man. Um, I'm what sure I did think. I went to? The, I went to the movies the other day. What did I see? Not Christmas Story. I saw another movie. You saw the and it was so funny. Wreck It Ralph. No, I saw the new one with uh, Mark Wahlberg in it, uh, oh. where he adopted the kids. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Let me. Um, wasn't I've seen it? the previews uh, for. I don't know what it's Instant called. Family. Oh. Yeah, I think it's called Instant Family. That is a funny. And a heartfelt movie. It's kind of like one of those, 
okay, I don't, uh, half the time I'm like, my eyes are watering. The other time I'm laughing really hard. <laughs> and it was really good movie. Just a make you feel good movie. Uh, him and his wife start talking about adopting a little baby and all that. And of course, everybody wants a baby. And then they go and they see these old, this older girl. And he's like, why are they over there? And they're like, oh, nobody ever wants to talk to us. We're the, you know, the, the teenagers. Nobody wants a teenager. And he's like, oh, well, I think I'll take you. And he finds out she has two siblings that are younger. They take both of them in. So instead of having one kid, they end up with three, an instant family. It is so funny. And then they're, you know, it's kind of like a Hallmark movie. Their mom comes back <laughs> in the picture and, you know, they got to decide who they want to live with. Anyway, great, great, funny movie. I, I would say not just a guy movie, but it's more like if you want to take your wife out or something, go see that movie. That sounds good. Yeah. Um, uh, obviously, there are two movies that I really want to see, and that's Ralph Breaks the Internet. Yes, I haven't got to see um, that what's, yet. What's, you oh, Creed guys 2. Have, tell me Creed 2 is the other one. I really want to see Creed 2, me obviously. Too. I like the first one a lot. I actually rewatched the first one, because right. I want, just in case I get a chance to see it. But um, okay. I, I did watch a couple of movies. I watched Ant-Man and Wasp. Have you seen that? Yes. It was I've okay. Part, I've seen most of it. I have not got to see it all. It was okay. Okay. I went, it wasn't as good as Ant-Man, the first one. Um, but it was okay. It was entertaining. Uh, and then I've been watching the Titans um, DC Universe show. I, okay. try, I watched the first two episodes of it, and that's mm. all I could stomach. Really? And it's, that's it. Well, um, and and I think I did any like, cartoon these days. It's not a cartoon hard for me. Oh, it's it's not? live action. Okay. So it's live action. Um, you can only get it on the DC Universe service, and I did a trial kind of thing, you know, yeah. just to see. And I watched like halfway through the second episode, and it's just like nope. Yeah. I can do it. Nope. Mm-hmm. So, anything you did you finish up making a murder season two? I did finish watching that. It yeah. definitely left you wondering. You know, made me want to Google a lot of stuff mm-hmm. after to see what's going on. Um, really makes you think. That's a good the way they. It's either the way they shoot it or or the literal facts. Really, at the end, they, scary. at yeah. the end they were. I mean, just like the preponderance of evidence of him being innocent. Right. Was amazing. And and pointing to other people. Right. To find, you know, that's something never come up. It's kind of like, I think it's one thing to prove your innocence, but if you can, one of the best ways to prove your innocence is prove who did, did it. it. Right, exactly. And boy, that's sure, it, one other guy really looks guilty. And I'm like, wow. And they, and the fact that that was never brought up, it really makes me feel bad for the first lawyers that he had. Like they, either their hands were tied or they didn't have enough time. I don't know what it was, but they did not do a very good job. Right. As much that lady, if I get in trouble, I want that lady lawyer. Absolutely, <laughs> she's pretty. She yeah, is a, she's pretty good. She's a bulldog. Man. Yeah, she. I mean, she goes even after the it. other lawyers, even though we know how that ended up, they they were awesome too. You oh know? yeah, there were some good they lawyers. Did, I think they did the best that they could. They did at the time that they had. They didn't have near the time. I don't no, think that they was, have now. I mean, you know, and that was part of it. Is like you know, it's like. And a lot of it, you're, I mean, you're kind of trusting what the police did, and you can tell there's a lot of things they didn't do right. Right. You know, I mean, that's what it came down to. Well, and I think she approached it from, from a good perspective. If he's guilty, we'll figure it out. Right. But we've got to test. If you said it happened this way, well, let's prove it happened that way. Maybe you were wrong. Maybe it didn't totally. Maybe he did it, but he did it a different way. Right. So, you know, I think her methods were awesome, her experts and people, and it really... Well, it's like, yeah, that, I mean, it made sense. So much the jury couldn't see. I don't, I have a big t- hard time with any, with the words inadmissible evidence. Absolutely. If evidence is evidence, why is it never, why is it ever inadmissible? Right. Unless it's been tampered with or something. But, you know, so much stuff that would have favored him was never shown to the jury. And you can't fault them because they can only go with the facts that are presented to them. Uh, of course, we're both in the we're both in the camp that he probably didn't do it. Right, exactly. Uh, so. And and I and I'm, could I say that we're a hundred percent sure? Um, pretty sure. I mean, I, after watching the series, I uh, hope we didn't spoil nothing. It's, it's it's an opinion, right? Because you may re, you may watch the whole thing and think the opposite. There exactly. are definitely people that do, right? But um, after watching it, I really do feel like uh, it was a rush of judgment, and they needed somebody. I don't think he was necessarily as I don't think they framed him and planted evidence. Right. I think they misread the evidence because they wanted him to be guilty. Absolutely. Does that make sense? There was some that looked like it may have been planted. Yeah, maybe. Like the blood splatters in the car. Right, but it but it did explain like shell casings everywhere. Right. Because they found shell casings in the garage, and they and then the guy was like. I shoot my gun about 20 times a day. There's about 2,000 shell cases. You know, it's like, 
Oh, that made sense. Is right. there shell casings all over? He says, you can find shell casings in every building in here. I shoot that thing. He's like, some guy sat on his porch and shoots his gun all the time. <laughs> it made sense. Right. Then all of a sudden, it's like, why wasn't that brought up? Little stuff like that. Absolutely. Great show. Guys, if you've never watched Making a Murderer, I heavily recommend that you go back and watch the first one and the second season. And so, you know, last time, Tim, we talked about Homecoming and Little Drummer Girl. I haven't got around to watching either Still one. Still haven't watched either one either. And I really want to, and it's I've, been busy lately. I've and watched nothing busy. but pizza charts and my <laughs> pizza charts. Back, back of my eyelids. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> That's about all I've seen lately. Pizza charts. I like that. Yeah. Well, I think we're going to wrap it up right here, Tim. You got anything else? No, you're, thank you're, you're you guys. You're probably about to stop by the stores. So. Yep. I got to get over there and check and turn some paperwork in. But thank you guys, especially those of you who stuck around. Uh, we enjoy. I enjoy the after after show just because uh, me and you have hadn't really had a chance to catch up much, That's right. and we get a lot of um, response from the group too. So thanks everybody for watching again. Uh, this will be the last time you see us this year. So have a Merry Christmas and a Happy Holidays or whatever you're celebrating, even if it's just a one day off that you don't have to go to work. Yeah. May you enjoy it with your family and friends. Be surrounded. Remember uh, that we do offer life tips. Uh, if you're lonely this holiday or you don't have a friend or anything, you can always contact us and we'd be glad to talk to you and, and that, work with yeah, you. Yeah, and that email address is life at arcaderepairtips.com instead of the questions at arcaderepairtips.com. Right. They really go to the same place, but the life ones do get priority a lot of times. So if you send them to life, yeah. L-I-F-E, at arcaderepairtips.com. If you're going through a hard time right now, we'd, we'll talk to, we'd love to talk with you. Yeah, So um, by all means know that we've been through some tough stuff ourselves. Uh, we've been there. I've been homeless before. I've went through a divorce. I've been through some things. Uh, but you know what? Uh, so is everybody else. Yep. It's real. You're really not alone. Everybody goes through something, uh, no matter what you are. The right, same rain falls on the good and the bad. We all get wet. We all go through stuff in time. So whatever you're going through, know that it's temporary. Know that it's not going to last. And know that you got some friends that really do care about you as a person, not just uh, making money or not just our site or not just anything. We care about you as much as we, way more than we care about any piece of equipment or any game. We care more about you so you can always write or call or talk to us. Absolutely. So again, email address, guys, is life at arcaderepairtips.com. And if you guys are going through tough times, we'll be happy to talk to you and, you know, at least listen, if nothing else. Yeah, otherwise, so. keep fixing those games, keep sending those questions, and we'll be here. Sounds good. So guys, thank you again for staying tuned to the live show. Tim's about to go over to Mr. Gaddy's Pizza <laughs> and see Get what's going on with those sheets. And hopefully you have a great Christmas, a great New Year's, and we'll talk to you uh, right after that, Tim. Let's see what day that's going to be. I'm going to go ahead and bring it up here. That will be on the 3rd. Right. On the 3rd of January, unless something happens, we will see you guys back here for the live show. Thanks for joining us tonight, guys, and we will see you next year. Take see care. See you, everybody. Oops, I got my hand right in front of you. Yeah, <laughs>